exemptions, and she considered the Portage's sale use or value of real property in relation to the trails in the vicinity of the downtown center trail. So now we will um, open the public session uh, by advising and uh, for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance. First on our agenda, we open our meetings with a public forum, which is an opportunity for any members of the public to uh, share ideas, opinions, or ask questions regarding town government. Is there anybody here tonight who would like to speak? Mr. Lagoy, see your hand first. <laughs> Peter Lagoy, 21 Hayden Row Street. Um, I was asked to look into a trail issue by um, and a butter to an area of trail. And when I, it's nothing I'm involved with, but I, what I suggested to them was that they go to the meeting on that particular trail and, and, and present their issues to that particular um, board. And I uh, talked to them again then after the meeting. And what they told me was, let me read it here, because I, I obviously wasn't at the meeting. Um, they said that during that meeting, they, being the board, motioned and approved everything before they opened it to public comment. Um, that didn't seem right to me. And, but I looked on the state laws with regard to meeting, and that certainly is within the purview of boards. The chairman sets when public comment is open. But it seems to me that it would be better if they took public comment prior to closing um, a particular issue. It also got me thinking a little bit more about boards and committees that I've been on. And while we certainly don't want to be suggesting a change state law, perhaps it would be good for this board to consider um, providing some guidance to town boards and committees on how best to take public comment, when to take it, and then more than that, perhaps, letting the public know at these meetings sort of what they can and can't do. And I know this board is actually pretty good at doing that. Um, on the, when I've been on the planning board, it's been a mix. Sometimes we've, we were pretty good at doing it, sometimes we weren't. But uh, it might be good in time for the selectmen to help the other boards, give them some guidance on what ought to be done in terms of public comment. So that was just a public comment for you folks. Mr. Lagoy, was that the McDermott Lane? It was. Thank you. Mr. Cavallo, do you have guidance on that? I know that certainly if it's a public hearing, in my experience on the planning board, that there was a very definite place and time for the public to be heard. But my understanding has been that in other circumstances, not all boards are required to take public comment with every issue. It's, it's at the discretion of the board of the chairman. Or Mr. Herr, I thought that was the case on this board occasionally. So, so we have, why don't you go first? Yeah. There's two types of meetings. Yeah. Yes, and, and in fact, I think the distinction that uh, Member Wright mentions is correct. Uh, and that with a scheduled public hearing, uh, there is a requirement to seek, receive, and record public input. And with respect to general meetings, it's up to the chair to decide whether they will involve the public in the discussions of the board. So, so that said, and maybe we should make this a future agenda item, so mm -hmm. I don't know if we want to get into it tonight, but that said, it is generally the custom in Hopkinton that when people are reasonable and rational and we're having discussions at the board level and somebody raises their hand, typically in all the meetings I've been at, at, the, at on the Board of Selectmen and many other boards, 
usually people are recognized and you know thoughts are heard. If it gets out of control, then it's a different matter. But um, I thought we kind of went through this a couple of years ago and put out some policy guidelines about how we want people to hear. Well, yeah, be I was heard. Gonna, I was going to ask Mr. Kamalo. I know a few years ago we started having training right. uh, for both the new board members as well as uh, people who are in need of being a chair of boards. Um, now, now, something like this, I'm going <laughs> to take Mr. Kerr's comment and break it down further. There's a couple of distinctions where right now we have public comment, you know, and, and it's probably a good idea for every board to have that before they get their meeting rolling. And then there's what Mr. Herr was referring to, where if you're in the middle of an issue and someone in the middle of the audience raises their hand, then it's typically good form if you can try to give them, you know, an opportunity is, again, as long as it's keeping the meeting within control and keeping it moving forward. Um, so, you know, I'm not sure if any of the training ever touched on that type of thing in, in particular, but, uh, you know, Peter, certainly, I, I agree that it's, it's good form and it's a good mm -hmm. suggestion to start to bring up to people. I think that the way different boards have their meetings run is typically uh, a factor of, you know, who's been chair, who's learning from that chair, and who's chair next. Now they just learned how to chair their meeting. Uh, you know, from the previous chair, and they kind of carry the tradition of the board uh, from from year to year. Uh, but if we could have some type of standardization, at least for the basic outline of a meeting and how it should flow, I think that's a great idea. So could yeah. we table this till we get to future agenda items, and I'll make a recommendation for a future agenda to discuss. Yeah. Okay. I think that's a good idea. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Peter. Miss Heather from the library. I thought you'd still be at work. <laughs> I was there until very recently. Um, Susan Porter, chair of the library trustees, and I, I suppose Heather back and library director for anybody who may be watching who doesn't know me. Um, we were invited by Norman to come and talk to you about our grand opening celebrations this Friday. We weren't in time to get on the formal agenda, so we're doing it during the public forum session. So Susan has just passed out a draft of our program, and I'm going to let her take the floor. The trustees <laughs> have planned this, um, and they've done a wonderful okay. job of it. So, so. <laughs> um, after much plusing and minusing of uh, speakers and uh, um, food purveyors and others because of changing dates, um, we have settled on uh, a program that will um, have, <laughs> uh, yes, it will. Um, we'll have a, a series of speakers, including Mr. Katina from the Selectmen, um, and uh, our commissioner from MBLC, Marianne Klugish. Uh, Laura Barry will speak for both the uh, PBC and the HPLF. Um, Heather, of course, mm -hmm. and our only politician that managed to, <laughs> to have a free date was Karen Spelka, who will be coming in late, but will, but definitely wants to speak, so we will have that um, portion. I believe Mr. Catino is a politician. Well, yes, that's <laughs> true. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> You're right. That's Ooh, true. Edward. I apologize. You're all politicians. <laughs> <I'm not. laughs> um, but anyway, yes. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> and and um, we had a, a discovery while we were you know, renovating of the bell <laughs> that's still there and will be rung um, at the end as they're, the ribbon will be cut. Mm -hmm. So um, Len Holding, who was one of the original trustees, the private trustees, will be doing that for us. Um, once we go inside, we have food that will be offered by Waterfresh Farm. Um, we had to, Snappy Dogs was unable to, to make the new date. So we'll have Waterfresh doing that. Um, we have tours and the grandfather clock will be rededicated. The friends um, graciously uh, paid to have that um, rehabilitated and reinstalled. And um, a gentleman who has a lot of history of that clock will be giving a, a program in the main um, meeting room. And then in the evening, we will have a separate ribbon cutting for the children's room and for the new 
YA room so that um, kids that are in school during the 11 to 2 program um, will have an opportunity to come and see and partake in ribbon cutting and treats. <laughs> <laughs> and that is what we're doing. So <laughs> um, if you have any questions or uh, I hope yeah. some of you will be joining us. I know that. Uh, who is in for that? I was planning on going, and I just got called on. Um, Claire, yeah, I would certainly be there. <laughs> Mrs. Wright and Mr. Todd, Mr. Going. Mr. Wright and I'm going to um, do my best. And Mr. I don't Coutino. know what my patient load is, right. but if I can get there, I can mm -hmm. get there. Wonderful. Yeah, I that would can't be wonderful. now, unfortunately. So, mm -hmm. I think this looks great, mm -hmm. and I think it's going to be a fabulous day. And mm -hmm. I'm sorry I can't make it, but I'll certainly be coming by soon. That's good. I hope it's so. It's very exciting for the town. It looks great. It is beautiful. Everyone's going to be very impressed. It is an yeah. amazing it's an astounding space. Astounding building. It's mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. yeah. We got we got a little bit of a tour last night. I know that mm -hmm. the whole board couldn't make it, but uh, you know, I mean, it just it's it to me it was jaw dropping. Um, <laughs> you know, it really so, was beautiful, especially um, compared to what we had. <laughs> absolutely, yes. absolutely. Yeah. I think people are going to be you know. Even even people who were strong proponents are going to be pleasantly surprised. Mm -hmm. It's going to go beyond what their expectations were, I, in my opinion. Good. Good. Um, so uh, it should be an exciting day, and hopefully we'll have a great turnout mm -hmm. and great weather. And the weather, yes, the weather. I've been so watching. Far, it's looking so good, far, yeah. so good. <laughs> Keep this rain. Get this rain over with. Well, I, I will also mention that uh, we had the privilege, thank you very much, Heather, oh, for welcome. giving Absolutely. the selectmen a, a private tour last oh. night with Mr. Sestari oh. and oh. Chairman Catino uh, were able to attend, uh, as was I, and it, it was absolutely beautiful. And um, as Heather explained, the public is has their tongues hanging out waiting for this <laughs> to open, even in the time that we were uh, waiting in the lobby area for everyone to attend. Uh, there were people kind of hungrily going by and looking, and, and Heather made sure the door was locked because she's just been battening down the hatches. People are, are so anxious uh, to get in, so um, I guess they'll be storming the barricades on so. Friday. <laughs> we have every single staff member scheduled all day Friday because we're just expecting yeah. it to be a crazy, crazy day. And it won't stop. Oh, hopefully not. That's our aim. That's, That's our aim. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming. Yes. And, uh, you know, everyone <laughs> watching at home, um, <laughs> you're <laughs> consider <laughs> yourselves uh, yes. notified uh, about the big event Great. on uh, Friday, yes. October 27th. From 11 to 2 at the new mm -hmm. library. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. Thank you. Your time. Get back to work. Got lots to do. Are there any other public uh, public comments, Mr. Whalen? Welcome. Uh, Michael Whalen, 262 Wood Street. Um, on your agenda is uh, an appointment later on for a, a new member for the veteran celebration committee and i just wanted to mention the reason there is an opening is because our uh the person that she, she is going to be replaced uh kevin nathan uh joined the navy and he's being deployed overseas so i know we all wish him well and um uh, uh, look forward to his return uh, and um so while i'm here i just want to plug my uh veterans day celebration and, uh, and dinners on November 11th uh, will be uh, at the Senior Center 11 a.m. That's a Saturday for the Legion will hold its regular uh, Veterans Day acknowledgement. And I also want to uh, mention that in the evening we're going to be at the Woodville Rod and Gun Club for the, the dinner put on by the, the committee. And I, I want to uh, make sure everybody is aware that the generosity of the Woodville Rod and Gun Club providing that venue for us every year, and it, it uh, really makes it for a, a nice occasion for all the veterans. And I know you are all invited. Or I'm sure Maria got the word to you. And um, no, no speaking is required. Uh, just attend and uh, have a nice time. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Sure. Thanks, Mike. Yeah. Anyone else this evening? Seeing no more takers, 
uh, we will proceed with our consent agenda. And there are three items uh, on the consent agenda which we may vote as a, as a group if no other members would like to pull them out individually. Um, first are the board minutes from the Board of Selectmen's meeting from October 3rd, 2017. Second is a parade permit for the REMAX Executive Charitable Foundation. Uh, the Board of Selectmen will consider approving a parade permit from Sandy Lucchese on behalf of REMAX Executive Charitable Foundation for a 5K race to be held on November 18th, 2017, beginning at 9 a.m., starting and ending at the Hoppington Country Club. Um, expected number of participants is 150. Sandy is responsible for the litter control. Deb Thomas, on-site person responsible. Uh, this 5K race is the largest fundraiser for the foundation to support local families in need. And the third item is the Board of Selectmen will consider approving a common vigilar license for the new owner, Mandu Abdallah of Marathon Pizza at 30 Main Street, Hopkinton, um, who is... Yep. Nope, you skipped. You, what you did I skip? Oh, I'm, on, I'm sorry, I'm on, I, I yep. skipped a page. Yep. I'm sorry, the, uh, the third item, uh, erase that, <laughs> is a parade permit for a Halloween walk event on the Center Trail. Um, a request of Christina Anderson for use of the Center Trail for a Halloween walk event Sunday, October 29th from 2 to 5 p.m. Uh, the Board of Selectmen approval is requested as property owners for the portion of the Center Trail from Main Street extending approximately um, 1,270 feet to the south. Um, are there any requests to pull any of these out individually? None for me. Okay. In that case, I will entertain a motion um, to approve all three items uh, as submitted. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Next on our agenda, the Veteran Celebration Committee appointment, as Mr. Uh, Whalen spoke of. The Board of Selectmen will consider an appointment to the Veteran Celebration Committee. There is currently one vacancy for a three-year at-large term. Applications have been received from Christina Anderson and Robert Holmes. And as Mr. Whalen said, this is replacing Kevin Nathan, um, who has been deployed and we Certainly, miss uh, will miss him and and wish him well. So, um, who is here tonight? Is Christina here or Mr. Holmes? Christina and Miss is Mr. Holmes here? Uh, through the chair, I believe uh, Mr. Holmes has withdrawn his interest in this position. Okay, Christina, would you like to come up and say hello to the board for a minute? Thank you for applying. Would you like to just tell us a little about yourself and your background and why you'd like to join this board? We're very pleased to have you apply. Uh, well, I used to work at and was involved with the American Legion at Ashland for many years. And since I left there, I just haven't really been able to find anything because I like helping the veterans and they're very important. And veterans and children, that's my thing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I saw the opening, so I figured it was a good way to get involved. Are there any questions from the board? Heart and backgrounds right aligned, so I'm all good. Thank you. And you're on the Youth Commission right now? Yes. Great. All right. Well, that sounds good. Uh, I'll move to uh, appoint Christina Anderson to the uh, Veterans Celebration Committee. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Um, all those in favor, aye. say aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you for volunteering and, and welcome aboard. Thanks. Thank you, Christine. Can we just document uh, when does this term end? This is, let's see. It says three, a three year at large, so does it start immediately? Correct. So, but the three but years will end in June 30th? Kevin's term. Kevin's term. So, Mr. Whalen, do you have any insight on this of when this is going to, when Mr. Nathan's term is up? I would guess he had at least a year <laughs> left on his term. Well, oh. if we 
could just make sure that, yeah, we'll, we'll that we have that document. So, so the motion is to approve the applicant for the, the balance of the term. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So, in other words, so that's it's your motion. An yeah, you didn't say and that was in my second. So, it's an unexpired term. It's it's not a full three year starting. Right. Right. It's an unexpired exactly. term. Right. So, this so. this this appointment will fill the term until its logical conclusion, which yep. is usually June June thirtieth of the third year. Right. right. Correct. I'm, I'm putting up the boards and committees data for right now. Yeah, we want to move to the next item. So. Yeah. Well, can we just make the motion for the completion of the unexpired term, yep. and, and we can, we can, notif we can yeah. notify Miss Anderson after the fact of exactly when that expiration is? Yes. Yes, on the second. Okay. So the motion will be for the um, completion of the three-year unexpired term. Do we need to revote that or? No. Did we vote it? We're all set. We did, but. Yeah, we voted. Yeah, we're all set. Good. We don't need that. Okay, thank you. Right, we'll, just, we'll just get back to her on, on the details when we figure out the when the term expires. Yeah. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, next on the agenda, we have another committee appointment, and this is for the Tax Relief Committee. The Board of Selectmen will consider the appointments of Sue Curries and David Relinsky to the Tax Relief Committee. There are currently three vacancies for three year at large terms. And I think I see Sue here and Mr. Relinsky, are you here as well? Yeah. Susan, why don't you come up first? Is Mr. Relinsky here? I'm not sure. I thought I heard it. Is Mr. Relinsky here? Let's see him. Here. Susan, tell us about you. I saw you have quite an impressive resume, and we're yes, thank you. You're happy you've applied. Just give us a little background why you'd like to be on this committee. Um, well, I think, as you all know, I'm interested in becoming more involved in the town. Mm -hmm. um, and in my adventures last spring, um, Nancy Haynes told me about the Tax Relief Committee, and um, she she really sold it. Um, I think it's really important to uh, make certain that our Hopkinton seniors are able to live in the town, and they thrive in the town, and that they feel valued. And so I think that the Tax Relief Committee is a, a way that I can do that. Great. Questions from the board? All set. Well, I'm good. Well, I appreciate you stepping up. I, uh, know Susan a little. I know she know her to be a very caring person and she cares about the town and uh, she cares about people and uh, that's certainly the kind of a heart that is needed uh, to serve on this type of a committee and so I'm, I was really glad to see your name here tonight. So and uh, Mr. Linsky has is he here? David come up and talk to us Just as well. Just rough made it, huh? <laughs> nice to have you as well. I came from the north and it's raining like crazy. Oh no. Right. Well, tell us a little about yourself. Oh, uh, Dave Berlinski. I've lived in town, uh, I'm going to say about 27 years now. Raised the kids in town, three kids. They're graduated, they're out of school. One lives at home. Uh, I used to live on Briarcliff, 16. Now I live on 27 Glen. And so uh, I'm a townie, uh, originally from New York. But uh, I wanted to uh, get involved in the town activities. I retired recently. I worked at Raytheon for 30 years, 30 plus years. And I just wanted to get involved in town activities and give back a bit to the community where I could. So I applied for this and I applied for the uh, Upper uh, Charles River Trail Committee because I walked that trail and have an interest there. Great. Good, good. 27 years doesn't make you a town. I, I don't. I, I'm I gotta be honest. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's my thing. That's my thing. You said that I heard him yeah. stirring yeah. his chair. Yeah. Yeah. Your kids are townies. <laughs> the kids are townies. I, I guess I'm. Uh, I'm I appreciate uh, townie wannabes. Yeah. <laughs> but I am interested in the town and uh, and uh, would like to no, you're dead participate. Serious. That's right. Yeah. Thank you, Dave. Yeah. The comments and the questions from the board. 
And I see you also volunteer for the senior center, so I know you. I did. You got an interest in the seniors. Yeah, I if I can, uh, if they need a lift someplace, or when they set the computer center up, because I'm an electrical engineer by trade, mm -hmm. so I may be able to help out there a few hours a week if they need it. So. Electrical engineer Raytheon. Raytheon, yeah. My father-in-law is a retired electrical engineer from Raytheon. Yeah. Cesar Favalaro. Yeah. Don't know. Excuse me? Do you not know much? What's the last name? Favaloro. A little bit familiar, but uh, not closely. Not, okay. not been more closely working. I worked in Woburn, worked in Marlboro, worked in Whalen, and they had a whale in Sudbury, so I'm a long term right down employee. I would say that with uh, two people applying for three openings, we can't afford any questions right now. Uh, yep. <laughs> Especially those that might push them away. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Mr. Kamal. Through the chair, um, this is not intended to prolong the discussion, but I, I want to recognize the work that is done by this committee, very beneficial to the community. And here with us tonight is Mr. John Palmer, who has been part of this committee for a long time. Mr. Palmer, would you like to add anything? I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased we have two new members, and uh, I think, in my account, this this gives us a full committee because we have uh, we re required to have the town treasurer as a member, a member from the board of assessors, which has been Mary Jo Lafreniere, and I'm an I'm an at large member. I used to be an assessor member, but I'm now an at large member. And these two uh, will also be at large members, so I, th I think that's a full committee. Good. Thank and you. we haven't had a full committee in a long time, so that's kind of. But there may be a disconnect with Mr. Palmer being the other at large member. I may be. may not know about. I so don't know if I. I don't know if I'm. Uh, yeah, let's make sure he's officially on there. I don't even know what my term is because I was with the assessors <laughs> and then I uh, switched over. You're not going to pull it up right now. No. <laughs> Also so not a townie. <laughs> <laughs> not a townie, no, but I'm 50 years, so yeah. that, that, yeah. that gets me a little This is as close as you're going to get. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, no, next I'm very happy. So I move that the Board of Selectmen appoint Sue Currys and David Relinsky to the Tax Relief Committee uh, to fill two of the three, well, for the two vacancies open. I also move that Maria confirm that Mr. Palmer is that third at-large me at large member on the committee and make sure that's cleaned up and if not, bring it back to us at the next meeting. Second. And, and I'm sorry, did I hear you specify that they take the longest terms that are available if there's more than two? Yes. Yes, I heard that too. Second. That All sense? right. The motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And our last appointment of the evening, we have an appointment for the Keith Tech Vocational School Committee. The Board of Selectmen will consider the appointment of Jamie Shepard as a regional school representative to the Keefe Tech Vocational School Committee. There is currently one vacancy for a Hopkinton resident. Uh, it, this is a three-year term. And uh, Jamie, is Jamie Shepard here tonight? In fact, in fact, through the chair. Yes, um, Mr. Kamal. Just before the meeting, I, I did contact town council with regard to this appointment. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just read a response from him. Um, and based on the response, I don't believe the board is able to act on this uh, oh. appointment tonight. Okay. So, can you elaborate on that, please? Yes. Um, I was specifically interested in understanding the the agreement that the town of Hockington signed alongside other towns who are members of the uh, Kif Tech Vocational School. Uh, and in reading that agreement, I, I noticed that there was a specific appointment process identified, and I, I, I checked in with town council whether there has been uh, any changes or what his understanding was, and we do both agree that the appointment process requires the selectmen
to sit alongside the remaining members of the Chief Tech uh, uh, Vocational School uh, Committee uh, in doing this appointment. So the selectmen on their own cannot act on, on this appointment. So if I could, Madam Chair, so that's not been the case yeah. in the last 10 years. Yeah, Because we've made this appointment several times. Mr. Shepard and I were in on a couple of these appointments. Um, and I don't understand why we would need to. I mean, we've, we've, we've made many appointments at the Board of Selectmen level only. I should say many, several, over the 10 years I've been around. Mm -hmm. uh, and those appointments stood, and those members voted, and then those members retired and moved on, and those everything went on fine. So I, I would rather not go that route, Mr. Kamal, if we don't have to. Because I don't think we need to, and I don't think, frankly, the key tech board members need to have to attend another meeting right. to select a member from our committee, our, our communities, represent them, us on their committee. Yeah, now we're, and we're talking about key tech board members from other towns coming here and having a say in who our representative is. That's kind of like a joint committee with the school committee of Hopkinton, but, <laughs> but they're from all over. They're from yeah. all over. That, that makes no yeah. I love Ray. That makes no sense. Yeah. No, again. It's not Ray saying it. Oh, it's it's what the agreement. It's the agreement that says it. But no, if the board is comfortable making the, I would say that it's Ray's yeah. interpretation, <coughs> of the agreement, and we can choose to accept his interpretation or act so independently. How about if we do this? Could we Ray's text? He's a texter. Could we text Ray and say we don't like that recommendation? Can we go ahead as we thought we would? I don't want to slow the meeting down to that point. Well, we can move on to something else. It won't take five minutes. Unless the Red Sox are playing. Oh, no, they're not. Um, so he should be attentive to his phone. Perhaps we could, well. But there is a World is Series now, game so. on, you know, so. Well, Ms. Shepard is yeah. here now. Perhaps we could speak with her and then um, table action until later in the meeting pending hearing back from Ray. I can't remember the last meeting where We've never had a meeting with yeah. these folks. No, they're they're great people. This is not a slight against the schools or people. None of that. Yeah. This is just efficiency or inefficiency, right? So, and hang in there, Jamie. It's <laughs> not nothing to do with you. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, it has everything to do with you. But um, I, I would. I hate to just blow him off completely if he says he really shouldn't go that route, right? Let's give him at least a chance to say. Suggestion: Board may continue uh, its its review and election tonight, and we'll confirm with Ray if your vote stands or needs to be corrected. But yeah, I guess we could we could always take our vote tonight. To, to Mr. Kamala's point, we could take our vote tonight, yeah. and then we can find out if it uh, is somehow invalidated. Yeah. And, and I think we could even, you know, if if we wanted, we could put the put the situation in front of the Keith Tech Board to see if. They have interest uh, in person, which they probably would not. Exactly. I, I don't imagine. I don't business. imagine they're going from town to town every couple of years. To every couple of months. That's what he says. All right, then let's move this along. Jamie, you are kind enough to come tonight. Talk to us a little about the Keefe Tech Board and uh, why you'd like to join it, and let's see if we can move this along. Okay, well, I'm an educator myself, um, and my son is now a sophomore at Keefe Tech. Um, he's definitely not your typical student. He's a hands-on learner, and he's made such progress just in the short time that he's been at Keefe Tech. He went from being a child who was always sick, hated going to school, every excuse in the book not to go to school, to crying last year when he had to miss a day because we were on vacation and didn't make it home on time. Um, he went from being a C student in Hopkinton to a high honor student at Keefe. Um, he's just really flourished there. Um, my younger son is also looking to go there next year, so when I heard of the opening, I thought it would be a good chance for me to kind of help out and give back to the community as well. Um, I've been an educator myself for a while. I ran um, a child care center for almost 20 years and just recently started to do early intervention, so I've got some more time on my hands now, a little bit more flexible schedule, so I thought that this would be a great opportunity. Absolutely. Questions from the board or remarks? So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we've, we've done this a few times over the years, uh, making this appointment. And sometimes we make the appointment and it's more a member of the Board of Selectmen 
that we appoint, or I think Mrs. Gates was a member or appointee for a while, and I think that's when we made that appointment. Um, so I think it's awesome that we have a parent mm -hmm. interested in representing the community on the school committee at Keith Tech. We have parents that are school committee members here in Hopkinton, and they are passionate about their kids' education, their own kids' education, and the kids of the community. So to have a parent step forward uh, in that role and say I'd like to be on the committee, I think that's a perfect fit and uh, really excited to see you here tonight. So thank, thank you. Yep, absolutely. I, I, uh, I will agree with what Mr. Hur said. Um, I'm familiar with the school and um, it's, uh, it'll, be, it'll be good to have someone on there, like you said, whose kids are going there that, that, that'll share the passion. Well, one kid is going and maybe another one too share the passion that the, uh, like you said, the, the members of our school committee share being on on, uh, on that committee. So uh, he come from a good name and uh, <laughs> he come to a good school. Is he a townie? Uh, well. My in-laws are townies. <laughs> in-laws are townies, yeah. I've been here for so I say, is he 16 I, years. I, I do believe I rode the bus with uh, your husband for three or four or five years in high school. <laughs> That's a good point, snuck out. Yep, yep. So, no, we're glad to have you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, for a brief second, my heart kind of fell when you said that your son was there, and I was thinking conflict of interest, but then I started thinking, well, wait a minute, on our school committee, we have plenty of parents. <laughs> so I breathed a sigh of relief. Um, but no, it's great. Um, thank you for coming out. You're welcome. I'll have thank you for having this. me. And, uh, Again, I'm so glad you came tonight and we had a chance to hear a little bit about your background. Um, again, my ongoing gripe, Mr. Kamala is not here right now, but my ongoing gripe with this volunteer application form is how little information it provides to the board about the applicants. So I'm just so pleased to hear about your background and learn more about you and uh, I'm delighted you would be a great contribution to that board um, with first-hand understanding of the school and how it serves its students. So um, thank you for taking the time. We're delighted you're here. Thank you. And that said, uh, after our discussion, shall we entertain a motion to um, uh, assign Ms. Shepard pending confirmation with, um, with Keith Tech? So board? moved. Second. Uh, I wouldn't so, say yeah, pending. Well, I'd rather I say pending. Yeah, I, I, would, I would oppose that motion if it's okay. actually on the table now. Uh, again, nothing, hang in there, Jamie. Nothing to do with that, Jamie, but specific to coordinating with any other board or even town council for that matter. I'd rather we take a clean vote mm -hmm. and be done with it. And if someone comes back and says, well, you really shouldn't have done that, but you did it anyway, so it's fine, then we're good and we just go on with life. Okay. But if they come back and there's some other issue, then we'll deal with it then. But there's never been another issue before. That's why I don't want to create it by no, adding agree. a step. Let's, let's ask for a new motion. I move uh, that the board vote to approve Ms. Shepard as, as a town representative on the Keith Tech Location School Committee. Second. A motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 And opposed, it's unanimous. Thank you very Thank you. much. Thank you. Thank you. you. It should be fine. It should be fine. It should be fine. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And now, um, we have the Foundation for Metro West Youth and Philanthropy Program is going to make a presentation. Um, Renee Quinn, the Senior Philanthropy Officer with the Foundation for Metro West will give a brief presentation to the board about the Foundation for Metro West Youth and Philanthropy Program and its work in Hopkinton. Renee, welcome. Thank you very much. And I'm going to have one, why don't you give me one more because our other members won't be here. Whatever. Hello. Thank you. I'm well. How are you? So tell us about the organization and what you do. Sure, well first I want to thank you for allowing me to come in and talk about the program. Um, like you mentioned, my name is Renee Quinn. I am coming from the Foundation for Metro West. 
For those of you um, unfamiliar with the foundation, we are the community foundation here in the Metro West region. Um, started in 1995 by a group of community um, residents who felt that there was a very strong community foundation in Boston, the Boston Foundation as we all know, and then um, West in Worcester, um, also a phenomenal community foundation, and these community members felt as though this area, the 33 cities and towns that we cover in the middle, um, really had a lot of need and that there was a lot of philanthropic resources, and so that is how the foundation for Metro West um, was founded. So connecting those philanthropic um, opportunities with the demonstrated need in the community. So we operate just like a traditional community foundation supporting the members in the community, Hopkinton being one of those communities. And um, just like any other foundation, we are asset holders, um, managers of um, philanthropic resources. Um, we grant um, all sorts of nonprofit um, focused grants in the community, arts and culture, hunger relief, um, family support, youth development. And the reason I'm here today is specifically to focus on our youth development um, program. Our youth and philanthropy program is an initiative under that umbrella. Um, we care deeply about philanthropy education, and particularly in this region, there are a lot of resources. So no one should ever go hungry, no one should ever not have a place to sleep at night, and um, philanthropy education was a piece of that in educating community members on what it takes to give back, um, what it means to be, you know, a for-profit, non-profit, a government agency, and you know how the the three of those work together. And so our youth and philanthropy program was developed uh, back in 1997, and young people go through a very in-depth curriculum, 17 weeks for high school, um, 13 weeks for middle school programs, and young people learn about the needs that exist in the Metro West community. Um, oftentimes young people don't understand um, that there are needs that exist. Um, you know, they live in particular communities where it's beautiful, you know, everyone um, goes home at night and has a great place to live and they're eating and um, just because they can't see something doesn't mean that it doesn't exist and so we teach them about that. Um, they do a deep dive into their personal philanthropic beliefs, you know, what are some of their passions? How can they give back to the community? Um, and building up these next generation of philanthropic leaders, civic leaders, and um, particularly in Hopkinton, we have a high school program that is funded by the Hopkinton Country Club um, Charitable Foundation. And they hold their sessions in the fall. 20 high school students, um, either living or learning in the Hopkinton community, can participate in the program. And like I mentioned, it's 17 weeks. In the beginning of the program, they're really taking a very educational um, focus on philanthropy, civic leadership, and they actually receive real life grants from nonprofit organizations. And they evaluate these grants. They learn, you know, how to take a deep dive into nonprofits and how they're managing their money, um, how they're addressing needs in a community. They read these grant applications, and then. Um, they go on site visits um, in the Hopkinton community and surrounding communities, and then come back, build consensus as a group of 20 young people, um, and then they fund nonprofit organizations, particularly two organizations. They have $10,000 to grant back out into the community, and um, a thousand of that they have to raise on their own. So they are invested in you know the money that's going back out to these organizations. Um, one piece that I did forget to mention is that the organizations that the students focus on are youth-focused organizations. And this is a real direct tie from you know a 16-year-old supporting another 16-year-old. Um, so these areas are everywhere from after-school programming, um, hunger relief, the environment, um, yeah, LGBTQ issues, any sort of social work, but really um, engaging with other young people and organizations that are supporting the um, unmet needs of those um, populations. So they host their program at the um, Center for the Arts on Monday evenings, and I um, invite you to a grant defense presentation where they have the chance to defend their um, choices to a panel of community leaders um, from the Foundation for Metro West. And yeah, and it's just a really empowering thing to see a group of young people take real responsibility, and, and they really take it seriously. And um, and to know that our alums are going off and doing really great things. They're starting nonprofit organizations. They're sitting on nonprofit boards. Um, but you, they're just very much 
um, interested, engaged, and educated on what it what it takes. And so um, they're they're very connected to the community, and that's our hope. Questions. So my son went through the youth in philanthropy. philanthropy. The philanthropy program last year. It's a big word. <laughs> uh, the two words together is a <laughs> um, I, It was awesome. And it was a really fascinating experience for him, and we enjoyed watching it, you know, 10 feet back and so on. Um, but I really thought it was very worthwhile for him and for his friends that was involved in a great learning experience. Um, and I think you're right, you know, we live in a great community and we have a lot of assets in the community and you know, we've got a beautiful library coming online and we've got beautiful schools and all these things, but there's all kinds of folks out in the world that have different challenges every day that we don't see necessarily. I mean, maybe the adults of the community do, but the kids don't. Mm -hmm. I mean, the kids kind of are sort of isolated a little bit. Um, and, and it was really fascinating, some of the things that kind of came out, out through this process. My question is, you know, what can Hopkinton as a community do to help the, the foundation and the youth and philanthropy, philanthropy program uh, going forward? What does it you need from us, if yeah. anything, I don't know. Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, one uh, piece of information I did want to point out, and you made me think of it, is that um, it's a very highly leveraged giving opportunity. So not only um, is the Hopkinton Country Club Charitable Foundation who has supported the first three years of the program in Hopkinton, not only is it a way to educate young people, but then it's also trickling down and going right back out into the community and the needs that exist. Um, but that's a great question. What do we need to you know, continue this program in Hopkinton? And we are looking to endow the program. Um, we are just starting to build a network, a network of Hopkinton residents um, who are passionate about philanthropy education, passionate about the community. Um, you know, we're not quite sure, you know, we're working towards that. That's our ultimate goal, is to make sure that this program stays in Hopkinton in perpetuity. Um, because it's very much needed. And so, you know, building connections, um, recruiting students, you know, raising awareness of, that the program actually exists. Um, I think it was, you know, some crazy number percentage of young people when they um, apply to the program. Usually it's word of mouth. And so, you know, letting people know, letting people know that, um, that are in your neighborhoods that have young people um, to participate in the program um, is a good thing for us. So just building our network and starting to get the word out that this program does exist and what it's doing for the community. To my discredit, I, I had not heard of your organization before, so I'm, I'm That's really why I'm glad here. that you're here. <laughs> Uh, I don't completely understand. I know there's a list here of about, uh, oh, it looks like about 14 communities. Um, yes. Hoppington is one of those. So, um, for instance, the group from Hoppington, Brian, you had a child participate. Do you have sort of like a, a, a sponsor in each of these towns? In the case of Hoppington, it's the Country Club yeah. Charitable. And then you sort of have a, a class of Hopkinton students that participate in the Hopkinton program, which is at the Cultural Arts Center and in each of these other 13 communities you have the same thing replicated in their area? Yes, so um, really great questions. I can answer a, a few of them. Um, each program is funded by a, through a funding partner. Mm -hmm. So we cannot operate, um, we can't have the granting money to go back into the community, the operational funding support without a funder in a particular community. Mm -hmm. um, I have many examples I could give you from this list because they each vary. Um, but for example, our Concord schools, all five of them, a family had stepped up in Concord and fully funded and endowed each of those five programs and so they operate through that and so we can walk away knowing that we don't have to continue to fundraise for them mm -hmm. that it's um, that the program is there running very well in Concord mm -hmm. um, but then you know another great example is in Wellesley there's a uh, program in Wellesley and we have a funding partner the fund for Wellesley who has agreed to fund the program for three years. And in that three years, we build up our relationships in the community, we build up interest in the um, program, and then we fundraise that way to endow it so that then we can move on to another community and keep that one fully functioning and operating in the community. 
So, so there are multiple um, ways so of funding. So in any given year, say in Hockington, between middle school and high school, how many students would be involved in that 20. youth program? 20. There are only 20 available um, spots. And the reason we do that is because these students are asking really tough questions. They're building consensus with a group of 20 people. And as you know, that's very difficult to do. And so Try having a voice, <laughs> <laughs> so having a voice um, is very important to us. And so 20 seems to be the, the perfect number to allow every student to feel that they have a voice and that they're a part of the decision making. Um, so 20 is our max per community. Um, and we have a few middle school programs too, but the student, the Hopkinton students will apply ninth grade through 12th grade. They don't have to be in a particular grade and they apply through um, the foundation for Metro West and we do interviews and we allot these 20 um, spots for the students. And this is all done extracurricular? On this is time. all extracurricular. Um, they receive community service hours for it. Um, it's a really deep way of getting their community service hours. And, and I don't mean to hog the questions, but my, my final question. Um, sure. Is there, when were the Hopkinton students or any of the other, these other communities say Hopkinton, would they be particularly connected or involved with some existing Hopkinton philanthropic organizations, like in this case, maybe Project Just Because or the Listno Center, or yeah. are they trying to develop their own charitable um, endeavors so they actually receive so we receive grant applications from Hopkinton nonprofits and surrounding communities so some in Wayland Sudbury and then the, we hand them off to the students and so then they evaluate those so we actually have to have the nonprofits apply through us through our youth development program and then the students are the ones that actually evaluate the organizations I see. yes yeah and so they have nine thousand dollars that they're well ten total when they fundraise the extra thousand now, I saw recently a notice that came to the board. I believe there's a Hopkinton student who is being honored, or um, there's, a, there's what, a dinner being given, I know. Is it this Friday? I know Next Ben Charre, a yep. student at Hopkinton, yes. is speaking at that event yep. um, about his experience in youth and philanthropy and how he looks. It's a very much corporate event, but um, he will be there speaking. I invite you all to attend. Um, but it's, um, yes, yeah, so we have a Hopkinton student who, and he was honored this past spring at our spring inspiration breakfast for the work that he's doing around philanthropy, in, particularly in Hopkinton. If, if I just may, I, I noticed the invitation and, and you know, saw that it was a Hopkinton student. We always like to be supportive of our students. I, I, I think a number of us also noticed that there is a, there's a cost associated with it that may run into some sort of conflict of interest, things with what a board member yeah. can accept. Yeah, um, yeah. And, you know, because we certainly always love to, love to support our students sure. when we've achieved something. Um, well, I'd be happy to connect you guys with more information about everything we're doing as a community foundation. Yeah. Um, because we love being in Hopkinton, of course. Well, wonderful. Other questions on the part of the well, board? Well, I don't know if you're going to keep hogging everything. <laughs> I know. I just goodness. had a bunch of questions, and so I took my time. Just, so how many uh, apply each year for those 20 spots? That's a great question. Um, we had 48 students apply. And Hop Hopkinton is um, our top three most popular programs. Um, that's obviously thanks in part to the Hopkinton Country Club Charitable Foundation for their support in promoting the program as well. Um, but it's a very popular program in the community. Wellesley, Hopkinton, and then we have a few of our schools in Concord that are, I mean, exceed the 20 um, applications for the slots. Yeah, because you know, Hopkinton it really is a, a, a giving community as you, mm -hmm. as you were alluding to earlier. You know, um, and just recently with the cultural arts, the library, Bay Path, um, Respite yeah. Center, just because, you know, and, and so I think that the, the um, students grow up seeing that, um, you know, that, and my father always said, it, you're not, you're never truly successful until you give back. Yeah. And it's a great thing for kids to start learning early. And yeah. It, it sounds like a great program. And I, 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 again, I didn't know anything about it, which I feel badly about. So any information that you can continue giving us as, as a board and as a community, yeah. we greatly appreciate it so yeah. that you can move that 48 up to you know, yeah. 108. And, and then we can have two programs running this mm -hmm. <laughs> in perpetuity in Hopkinton. No, it's um, wonderful. And students really, 
um, understand, they learn the different ways to give back. Oftentimes they think, oh, philanthropy, that's such a big word. That's the Bill Gates of the world. But no, it's very grassroots. Um, they get an understanding of how governments you know, operate and then why nonprofits have to step in and support the community. And so I think it's just, it's a really unique way for them to create their own identity around giving back. And what now, that takes. Do the kids learn the other side of it? Do they? Do you teach me kind of the grant writing, to, so that they can because that's something that Mr. Kamalo and, <laughs> and his team do a great job in the fire department, police department. You know, it, it, you know the grant writing to get yeah. the town money out from from outside sources. So we talk about that briefly and how you fundraise. So we there's a session completely on you know what it takes to fundraise, grant writing being one of them. We do not dive deep into mm -hmm. actual grant writing. Um, you know, having the opportunity to experience that. Um, but I actually have a young woman who's interning with me right now from Hopkinton, and I am helping her learn a little bit more about grant writing. So that's just a side Because note. even in undergraduate school and, and such, kids um, or, or students have to sometimes uh, write, look for grants to, to further along some of their projects and stuff. Sure, and another piece of this, they understand how hard it is. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to raise money, and so they really understand that as they um, have to fundraise that one thousand thousand um, dollars but yes yeah, so no we do not do any sort of in-depth grant writing exercises um, but that's worth noting and you know Excellent. something Thank to you. talk about well if your students feel that philanthropy is an awfully big word they can be comforted knowing that our selectman her can't even <laughs> pronounce it <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't Thanks, mean that, but he is a, he is a giver. Yeah. I have just one more question for you. Sure. Um, Hopkinton Country Club has been very generous in being your in your, your sponsor. The charitable foundation. The yes. charitable yeah. foundation. Do you seek other sponsors as well, or, or? so? Um, so currently, they have fully funded the program for three years. They're in their second year. It's operating uh -huh. right now, as you'll see the curriculums in your um, folder. But. Um, so they fully fund the program um, in the Hopkinton community. That does not cover all of the operational expenses that this program um, occur, like accrues. So mm -hmm. accrues, and so they, um, so we do need supplemental support. And one of the things is that they're committed through next year. And so, you know, obviously, we'd like to partner with them to build, you know, a larger endowment so that we can you know, not have to constantly fundraise for it every year. Okay. <coughs> well, if there are no further questions, oh, Mr. Kamalo, yes. Uh, Renee, uh, thank you so much for coming sure, out no, tonight thank you. to speak to this program. Uh, thank you for the great work that you do with the young kids of the Metro West communities. Um, for the sports information, um, we have also included Denise Hildreth, the Youth and Family Services Director uh, in this conversation. And the question he has asked me is, how can, he get in, how can she get involved? Oh. Um, well, and yeah. also, <laughs> my understanding from, from, from my conversations with Maria Klein, who also did a great job facilitating this conversation, uh, is that, yes, the Hopkinton Country Club is the only supporter of your program. Uh, hence, the reason why you have the endowment program, to find other, other sources. Yes, yeah. other sources. Uh, and, and I think one suggestion that we would put out there, which this community has done extremely well, is the invitational entry program that we run through the marathon. Mm -hmm. uh, we are always looking for opportunities uh, that bring to our attention new ideas for strengthening community Hopkinton, and I believe this is one such idea. And we will let Maria let you know when that invitational entry program uh, is rolled out. Yeah, that's wonderful. I would love to connect with her offline um, as well. So that's great. Thank you. Yeah. But yeah, you said it perfectly. I mean, we we need to raise money to make sure that it stays here forever. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for your no, time. No, thank you. I appreciate it. Enlightening presentation. Yes, thank you. Really pleased to know about it. And uh, fortunately, our Real chairman, Mr. Catino, is here now. No, no. Why don't we, why don't we don't save all my stuff over here? You got all your stuff. Yeah, you get your stuff right, right here. Well, good. Good. I'm going to turn the meeting over to the chairman now. Okay. So, time to be a little bit behind. The but, uh, Center, not Okay, much. the International Marathon Center. The Board of Selectmen will receive an update from the 26.2 Foundation regarding the building of an International Marathon Center in Hopkinton. 
and consider taking steps necessary to support said project, including taking action in regard to the siting of the International Marathon Center on the Legacy Farms Recreational Parcel on East Main Street. So, uh, there, is there anybody from the 26.2 Foundation? Just walked in. Ah, right there. look at the great timing. Can you imagine that? <laughs> Could you please come in and introduce yourself? So, Mr. Com Mr. Chair, while they're setting up, Mr. Kamala may have some additional information about a previous vote we took. I think it's going to take a couple minutes. Yes, as they are setting up, um, I had the opportunity to speak with, uh, with town council. Uh, as well as uh, the town clerk, Connor Deegan, regarding the uh, KIF vocational school appointment. Uh, there were several ideas that we shared. However, we came down to the following two steps. Uh, one, the board can go ahead today and take a vote. However, that vote will need to include Mr. Cotino. Um, how we arrived at that is that Mr. Tedstone, is a member of the Kiev Tech Vocational School Committee. And they did clarify that the participation in the local vote is by the community's members in that committee. And so we have Mr. Tedstone. Will Ms. Since Mr. Tedstone is also a member of the Board of Selectmen, how do we count his vote? I think the conclusion we reached is that uh, he will have to represent the committee, and that's why we need Mr. Cotino to then come in and vote alongside the Board of Selectmen. So that's step one. Then step two, uh, based on our conversations with the town clerk and also the requirements of the open meeting law, we will then host at a future meeting the appointing committee. The appointing committee will include Mr. Stedstone <coughs> and the remaining members of the Board of Selectmen and then you'll formalize the vote that you have taken tonight. Okay, so yes. <coughs> that made no sense. Yeah, I thought we were going to yes. get Yeah, we took care of it. Okay. Well, if it's okay. better to take another vote at the next meeting, you can do that too. Okay. Uh, you wonder why people don't volunteer to get involved in stuff like this. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it's not him where he's just no, repeating what other that. people are saying. Hey, he's the messenger. He's, he's the messenger. The messenger. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. but two. We just did basically what you described. We had a we had a quorum of the board without Mr. Catino. We don't need to reinvent the wheel because right. he just showed up. Even if I true. were yeah, not part of the, not the board of selectmen, if I was, the board of selectmen. we still have a quorum with three. Can we retake the vote now with John? No. No, you don't. No, what, I, does, I, what's, what does John have to do with anything? <laughs> exactly. Well, what, what role does John Catino <laughs> play in the world? <laughs> there's a quorum requirement. There's also a posting requirement. What this was vote. posted. We had an agenda. The, posted. Appoint, the appointing committee was not posted. That's a fact. Okay. Yeah. Getting ready for next meeting. All right. Let's, uh, okay. Let's work on it for next meeting. We could save a lot of money by using. But no, I zone. think I think basically <laughs> what he's saying is we have to do this tonight, and then we have to do it again. Is that what you're saying? Let's do it every meeting. Formalizing it. Yeah. So <laughs> yes. we have to do it again tonight. Yeah. Okay. So we'll do it after this week, as we're already nine minutes behind. Correct. We weren't when Mrs. Wright was well, the chair. Wait. Do we have people waiting here for that to be resolved? <laughs> no. Okay. Okay. Right, so Mr. Kilduff. Mr. Catino. <clears throat> Welcome. Thank you. Nice to be here. Um, before we begin, um, I'd like to introduce uh, Steve Lewis, who is a partner in the architectural firm of GRL here in Hopkinton. Uh, we're going to do a quick overview to sort of set the set the frame here and then spend as much time as you like on on specifics and as we begin i would ask you to uh suspend if you can uh your thinking for a little bit um, i think it's fair to say that this is a big idea uh and it, it's it's coming out of uh, years of experience in terms of uh relating with the marathon and coming to the understanding that there's more to the marathon than running 26.2 miles, and by that I mean the kind of words that get conjured up when you're talking about the, uh, about the marathon are, are planning, uh, heritage, history, uh, as, as Claire knows now having just visited Athens. When you go into Athens and you walk into that Olympic stadium and see where the first Olympic marathon finished, you, you begin to get a sense of, of the heritage and history. 
uh, courage, sportsmanship, fair play, all of those kinds of words uh, add to this broader concept of um, there's more to the marathon than running 26.2 miles, and that does not take away from some of the people in the audience who just ran the Marine Corps Marathon or the Chicago Marathon, but it's different, it's bigger. Uh, so a couple of weeks ago, we talked a little, a little bit about uh, what the 26.2 Foundation was all about, uh, and yet uh, at that point you asked for an update on the, the, this vision about an international marathon center, and that's what we want to focus on. Uh, this regional map. The reason it's up there is I think we forget sometimes as a community where we're, where we're located. Uh, and if you start mapping our location, 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 uh, it leads into uh, one of the strongest points for locating uh, an International Marathon Center slash Hall of Fame slash Museum in Hopkinton. Uh, Utica is on here, for example, because Utica is the home of the U.S. Long Distance Running Hall of Fame, uh, who, by the way, is interested in collaborating with us as we move forward. But you can see the big geographic centers, the population centers, uh, and we're right in the center of that. Uh, strong point. The big picture. If we look at this uh, center, we had a feasibility study done uh, many years ago now, uh, and the feasibility study essentially said two or three very simple things. One, uh, a center museum slash hall of fame slash something could work. It could work in Hopkinton, but it needed to be big. Uh, it can't be a storefront uh, with 25 pairs of Johnny Kelly's running shoes uh, on display, that sort of thing. It needs to be big. In order for it to be big, it needs to be more than just about marathoning. And if you look at the center of this graph, uh, Athletics, Education, Heritage Foundation, that's the core of what we're talking about, the core of the vision. And if you split off in various directions, let's just take the, the uh, heritage point. There's the museum, the Hall of Fame, and archives. There is not a place, uh, uh, the comprehensive location for marathon-related archives in the world. Uh, there's a museum in Berlin, Germany, but uh, our friend Catherine Switzer, for example, the materials and the, the archives that she has, uh, there really is no location. They'll ultimately, if there isn't one, it'll be sent to the University of Syracuse and people won't see it. Uh, you all had experience with the marathon. We have our own history here, but multiply that many, many, many times and there's no place to house this. If you look at the athletics part, uh, there's, more to, there's more to the just, the, this than just marathoning. If you start looking at other endurance sports, it multiplies the audience exponentially. It's, it's a huge global audience. Marathoning in China is like out of control. The president of China made, uh, made a pronouncement that there should be more soccer and more marathons in China. They're popping up all over. And they're they, when, they, when they do a marathon, there's 10, 15, 20,000 people in cities we don't even know the name of. Mm -hmm. So the global expansion is, is really huge. Uh, if we focus back on the International Marathon Center, these are the major components, uh, the major components of the vision. There, there will be a museum with the artifacts, a hall of fame that honors and recognizes uh, people who have contributed to long distance running. Uh, there's a, the, the, the possibilities of a running center. And then there's the foundation piece. We believe that we can create an institution in Hopkinton that can, can connect communities and marathons globally. Uh, there are organizations that do that in part. Uh, there's a, a race directors association, for example, that has a few hundred people. But we're really, we're really the, the, talking about uh, a, a global reach. Uh, in what we're and in what we're talking about is, it, 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 I, I hesitate to use the words, but I'll, I guess I'll do it anyway. We're talking about world class a world-class institution. Uh, it, it can't be small, and it's got to be substantial, and it's got to be world-class. This is just one vision of what it could look like. It's, we're, we're at the preliminary stages, and this is going to take a long time to work out the nuances, but that's the kind of global, world-class building that we're talking about. Um, I've asked uh, Steve if he would spend some time and talk about some specifics generally. Uh, and also, uh, we've taken the liberty of uh, 
doing a, a, a sketch, an artist rendering uh, of placing this facility on the property on East, uh, East Main Street that uh, the town uh, just got from uh, Legacy Farms not too long ago. And we can get into specifics, but Steve? Yeah, thanks, Tim. So again, I'm Steve Lewis, Golden Richardson Lewis Architects, and we've been working with Tim and the foundation Site plan is a little small, so maybe you can see it on the screen. They have the floor plan up, but I'm going to start with the site plan since Tim mentioned that. Uh, East Main Street, 135, and uh, Concom just approved uh, the crossing uh, within the last few months of the wetlands. There's some existing uh, Western Air Street uh, wetlands along here that were drainage or irrigation ponds, really, over the years. They exist as do as do these smaller ponds here. So in order to get access to the site, of course, we had to uh, cross one of them. So uh, we had done that and shown about two thirds of the parking in the front of the building, the remainder to the rear of the building because that's where the athletic fields are located. Athletic fields, open area. What's shown here in a dashed line is actually the size of the soccer field. So it's a good. It's a good amount of space, and the nice thing is it links to all the other trails uh, beyond the site. We could even incorporate uh, the existing pond for activities, picnic and uh, model boats, for example. But the point is, it, it just expands exponentially to to the town beyond, uh, and it could potentially even link to a, a future athletic facility on the neighboring site. Steve, before you jump off the site plan, what is the who owns that property to the left there? Is that the Spangler property? Yes, yes. Thank you. Um, yes, just for reference, this is the stone house, so it's just in that little depression in the site. Um, getting into the floor plan, so building blown up a little bit. Uh, the biggest feature is actually this uh, multi-purpose community space, if you will, that could be rented out for activities, but a good third of the facility is dedicated to the crime use of the Hall of Fame and the museum itself. So 8,000 square feet or so. The facility is shown is about 30 to 35,000 square feet, so it's not a small facility, as Jim said. Uh, in addition, there is a possible linkage to outdoor, as you can see here on the site plan street. Uh, outdoor lawn area, not athletic fields, but something dedicated possibly to tennis or uh, special event uh, activities that would further expand the facility on those important days. So uh, the other main spaces of the building, of course, there's an administrative area small store, uh, there is a, a theater and a classroom space. On top of that being here, we had a library as well. Downstairs, there is an elevator stair down to a smaller, not, not the whole uh, facility, but a smaller uh, underground uh, storage archive, basement storage archive. Uh, building <coughs> tucked over here on the right side behind the administration. And of course, the Great Hall links right through the site to, to the athletic fields beyond. As Tim said, these are preliminary designs. Um, they actually reflect the scheme just before this, but that things have changed so much over the years that uh, uh, this is what we have right now. So it's a large facility. Thirty thirty-five thousand 35,000 links to the uh, trails beyond, so it could be uh, wonderfully used by the town. Thanks, Steve. Yeah. May I just ask, is that athletic field in bad to be the, or the town athletic field? Because it's on the town parcel. What, what is that athletic field in the back by the pond? That's uh, open for public use. Uh, so it's intended as a town. One of the exciting parts of this particular parcel, and if you connect it with the work that's being done by the Trails Committee, for uh -huh. example, uh, there, there's 
there had been talk about creating a hub, a trails hub. Mm -hmm. That enhances everything. Mm -hmm. uh, to be able to do that and to add these parcels and the, the walkways and the trails through there, mm -hmm. it makes this an unusual pe uh, situation. The other, there's a little sort of uh, arm that reaches out to the left into the Spangler property. Mm -hmm. I gotta tell you, I, there is an old um, granite quarry back in there. Uh, and it's, it's, it's three walled. I've always thought that's the ideal place for a reflective area, calm uh, waterfall features, that sort of thing. So the, 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 that's what I, when I started to talk about it, the, the suspending our, our thinking for a minute, that's the kind of things that could happen. If we, can, if we can jump ahead and we can ever put those two parcels together, you have, this community has something that I don't think exists anywhere else in Eastern Massachusetts. Uh, and that would, that, would be, that would be ultimately the goal. But big idea, big vision, doable, we're told. Uh, we're convinced that it is. Uh, but we have spent a lot of time talking about this. Uh, and I can tell you the directors of the 26.2 Foundation, some of whom are in the audience, said it's time to stop talking and let's start to push this forward. So that's where it stands at the moment. Can we go back to the slide that showed the core four core values or what it was and then the spinoffs or, or key elements? Uh, this one, Brian? Yeah, that one then. Yeah, oh, yeah, gotcha. Right there. So, um, oops, sorry. <coughs> That's yeah. it. Yeah. Back one more to the oh. multiple. Uh, there we go. Okay. So, coming out of athletics is endurance sports, importance of moving, best practices. What I'm seeing, uh, from, from my vantage point anyway, and I try to be fairly active, uh, is the concept of fitness in general is just growing, I believe. And this is all, you know, this is, if you can do this, you're pretty fit. But fitness in general is, uh, is, is really taking off. I mean, I was watching a fitness competition last night uh, on ESPN or one of the, you know, one of the sports stations. It was the Reebok Fitness Championships or something. And it was amazing watching these human beings do the things they were doing. So I just think the concept of fitness is growing and maybe something that we could be part of this overall sort of mantra for the International Marathon Center. I love this idea. Uh, we got a long way to go. I get it, but I think uh, I think we're in the right place physically, and I think we're in the right place culturally to take advantage of something like this. I want to just uh, piggyback on that the the section that the the lines that uh, connect to education. Uh, every Twelfth grade, I, a twelve-year-old. That's roughly sixth grade, sixth, seventh grade. Uh, studies ancient Greece. It's part of the state core curriculum. That gives us uh, a lot of courage uh, with uh, creating something that attracts school kids as well. Um, the education, the life, the wellness, uh, health and wellness kinds of issues. That's where this will go ultimately. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. um, it, 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 I think you're absolutely right. But the other part that excites me is the, and, and I'm not bashful about this as all of you know, uh, I believe this community can in fact be uh, the global center for, for connecting communities, using the marathon as a base. Um, I believe that firmly. If we don't do it, somebody will. <coughs> Um, thanks for the presentation. Um, Tim, on multiple occasions, our board has um, voted its support, expressed its support. What, what more do you need? What do you need to keep this moving and at a pace that is appropriate? Well, that's a, that's a direct question, and I'll answer it directly. Um, I believe, uh, and it, it's tough to take me out of this discussion, personally, in my emotions about the community and the sport of marathoning, I believe that we ought to enter into some sort of negotiations uh, immediately to begin to get serious about um, creating an agreement that allows us to be able to go tell the world we have a location. Uh, that, that's somewhat of a stumbling block. It's great to talk about this vision and we can talk to representatives from, 
from athletic shoe companies, the minute you say it's going to be in Hopkinton and it's going to be on the course and here's, here's the piece of land, opportunities open up. So I, th I think it's time to do that. We've danced around this for a couple of years and we, we probably ought to move forward and start getting real and talk about how we can make this happen. And what, 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 how we can begin to, to think about, I think we ought to be thinking about how we uh, secure that other piece of property and there are ways to do that. That's the kind of discussions I think we have to have now with uh, the idea of moving forward pretty quickly. So, so that would be the 26.2 and the town getting together and the town assigning or giving or granting or leasing for 99 years or whatever, mm -hmm. for a buck, whatever it is, the land that was once for some dreamed of a hockey rink, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's over. Uh, and then it was soccer field, or it was soccer field, then it went to hockey rink, then we're back to a soccer field in the back in this. So that's the, that's the next step, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. Is that what you're talking about? Yes, sir. Okay. We've had uh, ongoing discussions with uh, Parks and Rec about this over the last, actually it's been a couple of years. Uh, we're very sensitive about the, the, the need for fields in Hopkinton. Uh, we're extremely uh, excited about being able to connect to the, the trail system. I mean, the potential is it rates back, back to running is phenomenal here. So based on our previous votes, what would stop us from... Well, I haven't asked any questions yet, Mr. Mr. Rook. I'm just... I'm sorry? May I? For a second? Before you... I thought we were having a dialogue about his, his <clears throat> question to him. Oh, I thought we were just going to ask questions and, you know, whatever for a second. But, but you know, feel free. So what would preclude us from getting into that? Haven't we already voted on this a couple of times? If I may. Um, starting off from uh, Mr. Sestari's comment, yes, the board has expressed its support for this concept multiple times. And I think we've also heard directly from Park and Rec that they support the concept of placing a marathon, uh, an international marathon center at this location. Um, and, and why I'm mentioning this is that in the past when the board has dealt with this issue, uh, we have, the board has considered a three-step process. Number one, confirming with Park and Rec that this is an appropriate use for the site. We've done that. We've even gone to, the board has done that. The board has even gone to town meeting for specific votes that will allow this to happen. Step number two, the board has to issue an RFP. This is required by law. And interested parties will respond. The board will identify the appropriate organization to partner with in moving this concept forward. And then step number three, we, the town enters into negotiations with the entity that wins the RFP process. So it's a three-step process. Step number one, I believe, has already been taken uh, multiple times by the selectmen, Park and Rec Commission, and town meeting. So the next step, therefore, would be to issue an RFP. So Tim, I'm just really glad to see the uh, visioning statement on there. I, I, it's, a, it's something that the town worked at for almost two years. You know, and, and this is where I see that it's an absolute, it's a great fit for Hopkinton. Um, you know, where in the visioning statement, uh, you know, as, as we talk about it, vibrant community located 20, nestled 26.2 miles west of Boston, endowed with open space, natural resources, facilities, and programs to promote well be, a well-educated and healthy community. And, uh, and, and to, to the, the other part of it, respect of our past, engaged in our present, and actually actively preparing for the future. I think all three of those statements that the town came up with support uh, you know, such, a, such a facility. Um, you know, especially the well-being in the town. You know, if, if, if there are periodicals or something that, that come out, I'm sure that Hopkinton, you know, they rank schools, they rank, rank a lot of things, that you know, we're a very healthy community. You know, and it's not just just from running. You know, we have we have um, lots of things that, that to, to promote the uh, well-being. Um, I, I just I think that uh, to Mr. Her's point, that, that uh, if Mr. Tedson doesn't have any uh, any questions, uh, the chair will seek a, a motion to instruct the uh, town manager to uh, solicit an RFP to site the International Marathon Center on uh, East Main Street in Hopkinton. So moved. 
Do we have Thank a you. Wait, wait, well, if it's second, then we can continue. Second. Discuss. Okay. Any further discussion? Mr. Kilduff, does that meet your what you need? Mr. Mr. Kamalo, is that okay? Is the motion okay? Yes. The answer is yes. Okay. Ms. Wright. Yeah, I didn't get a chance to. Oh, you asked the first one. Oh, okay, sorry. You, you, you started it. That's uh, why I thought yes. you were. Uh, okay. and, and, uh, this really isn't on the question of the RFP, but it's it's a beautiful program. It's a, a wonderful concept, um, and I see there are a couple parts of it. One of it is the land issue, which is something I think we're in a position to address. Um, but I do want to ask, because I'm sure people at home watching at home are asking this question as well, uh, as far as the center itself, how do you see this being funded? Private money. Absolutely private money. High net worth people and corporations. Okay. So our, our piece is the land. Is the land. I understand that. And I think that's a generous piece and a fair piece. Absolutely. If everybody's good with that, you might be able to get it done. So anything else? Okay. So um, that being said, uh, how do you vote? How would you like us to vote? <laughs> How about we start with all in favor? All in favor? Well, I, I, I'm sorry, I just said, how do you vote? Okay, you can say all in favor. When, if, even when you become chair, you can say all in favor. I believe we're now ready will, for a vote. I will vote aye. That was, that was something. Okay. All in favor? Aye. aye. Opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay, great. It's uh, unanimous. Uh, Mr. Kamalo, if you could uh, start on that, and we can uh, move along. Okay. Thank you very much for coming in. No, thank you, all of you. Excellent. Okay, we'll give you a few minutes to clean up. Okay, next up. Okay, a common victuals license, United Food Business Incorporated, doing business as Marathon Pizza. Board of Selectmen consider approving a, a license for a new owner for Marathon Pizza, 30, 30 Main Street, Hopkinton, to applicants requesting new hours of operation, 10 a.m. to 9.30 p.m., Monday through Sunday. Okay, is it? Oh, beautiful, thanks for coming out. <laughs> Didn't have to ask. How are you? How are you? Please introduce yourself. It's, my name is Mamza Abdullah, and they call me Moody. Oh, you can, you can move the microphone sure. over there. The, my real name is Mamza Abdullah. They usually call me like Moody as nickname. And I've been here in the state like since 1997, in this job since 1998. I had two stores before, one in William Mass, William Pizza House, and I sold it five years ago. And now I have one in Grafton, Mass, Lake Biasu Pizza, and just I bought this one like two weeks ago. Oh, excellent. Well, welcome. Thank you. Okay, anybody have any questions? This is the place next to Yogurt Beach? Yes. There's no alcohol service on there? I believe I saw you one time at that store, lunchtime here. <laughs> You'll see me at pizza places. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it was last week. For salads. Yeah. So I, I just missed a little bit of the background there. I'm sorry. I was distracted. Um, so this is the pizza shop next to Yogurt yes, Beach. Yes, yes. And it's Marathon Pizza. Yes. And it's operating today, correct? Yes. And it was operating under a previous owner until recently. Yep. And you've purchased it. And it'll continue to operate. Are you going to close at any time, or no? So it's going to stay, keep on going. stay yep. open. Yep. Um, and there is no alcohol in there, correct? No, I don't have alcohol. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. What's that? Okay. Thank you. Mr. Ted, sir. I'm good. I we have nothing. Either. I noticed he's closing oh. a little bit earlier, so quiets downtown a little bit more. We're trying to revitalize downtown. <laughs> you know, we, we leave this meeting, there's no way to go get something to eat. We start so early. Oh my goodness, I wouldn't mind if you said 10.30, we say, okay, there's a place where I can get a piece of pizza after this meeting. Oh my gosh, you're trying to roll up the, the sidewalks. We're trying to revitalize it. 
Okay, well, that being said, the chair will look for a motion to uh, approve the uh, license transfer for Marathon Pizza. Thank you. So moved. So moved. Oh, second. Okay. So moved. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. okay. Unanimous. Thank okay. you very much. Thank Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next up, parade permit, special temporary alcohol license for the Hopkinton Running Club. Wow, this was a long one. Mr. Chair, I don't think we need to read the whole thing. Okay, good. All right. Um, I'll just, uh, the, the short version, a, a parade permit uh, for a 10K memorial race in memory of Andy Weitzel, proceeds to benefit the Hopkinton High School Scholarship. The race we held on December 2nd. 2017 from 6 a.m. until 12 noon and will begin and end at Victory Field. The expected number of participants is 150 or 200. The alcohol process, uh, beer only, uh, members of the Running Club will collect trash beginning at 10 a.m. Start line brewery staff, tip certification will be displayed. Checking IDs and proper consumption safety. Stat line brew will break down the tent. Porn equipment will be removed from the property end of the event. Okay. Thank you for not reading the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're hey, just being thorough. I should, <coughs> Mr. Chair, for the, yes. for the public at home, the application is for a parade permit and a special temporary alcohol license. So there's two votes? Yes. Okay. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. What do you got for us? Um, so, my name is Wade Marshall, I'm the race director for this race, live in Hopkinton, part of the Hopkinton Runner Club since the first year, 2003. So um, I, think, I think I'll hand to Kathleen who can talk about the reason for doing this and then I can get into the run logistics. So I'm Kathleen Carthy and I co-founded the Hopkinton Running Club with Laura McKenzie um, in the back there. Um, so essentially, um, this race is in memory and honor of Andy Wessel who was a longtime resident of Hopkinton, many of you may have known him. Um, he was a tremendous coach and advocate for so many children in this town and through his personal and professional endeavors helped so many. So we want to carry forward his memory and he was a big member of the running club, a big runner. Um, so our goal is to raise money um, so that we can um, allocate at least one scholarship to a Hopkinton High School student who, um, it, not, not necessarily based on scholastics or athletics, but um, based on who inspired you as a coach or a role model like Andy did for so many in this town. So that's our goal. And that's why we're having this 10K. And so we chose uh, the victory field because there's so many races in around, you know, uh, Timlin and the, the marathon all around this part of town. So the race itself, there's a map attached. It's gonna be around Lake Whitehall. Uh, so there won't be any road closures. Um, we do have a couple of, um, areas of the street we're going to have to cross so we already talked to uh, officer porter about that he's fine with the the way the course is set up uh, there are three areas where we're going to need police presence for the crossing um, but again no road closures are going to have to happen so it's basically around lake whitehall i think you have a map there attached um, beginning in the end so it, again along with this we'll have a uh, start line brewing will be there um, at the end of the race uh, start pouring at 10 a.m. and then finish up uh, probably uh, noon. Okay. Any questions, comments, Unless thoughts? Uh, the, uh, the only, yeah, the, the, the one thing I did want to mention is that we did, I did work uh, with Harvey, um, the, the, uh, Harvey, the trash folks, yeah, and yeah. they're going to put a dumpster there on site for us. So yeah. they're going to do that on Friday and then take it away when the race is done. So that was one thing that changed during the application process when I submitted a few weeks ago. So I guess my question, victory field, that's, yep. is that where the little... It's a field with the tires around the outside. Yeah. Baseball yeah. slash soccer fields. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I don't have any problem with the parade permit. Um, I do have a problem with uh, alcohol being okay. sure. uh, distributed yep. on town property. Okay. Um, that's where I stand. Are you concerned, I'm just, are they concerned because it's... Town. It's town so, property? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't at all. We're doing it in the library on Saturday <laughs> night. Um, and we do it, we, we passed the bylaw to allow it to go elsewhere. I, I do a lot of, well, I used to run a lot of road races and a lot of them end up with some local microbrew 
uh, participating and be part of that process and be there and have tents or kegs and things going. So uh, I see it routinely. So I don't think it's out of the, you know, out of the realm of what typically goes on a lot of these road races. So. Mm -hmm. And it is a big draw. I mean, like it or not, I mean, runners like to drink, so it's a big draw. So we thought that would actually help out <laughs> with um, getting more people and getting, and, you know, maybe more than one scholarship, maybe two or three, you know, Great, if you get yeah. more money in, I right. think would help a lot more students. Right. Yeah. I'm so I like, so <laughs> I knew Andy, and I think this is a great event. Yeah. Uh, and it's for a great person, in memory of a great person. So. Um, anytime we can kind of conjure up the, uh, the history of Hopkinton and, and, and that's kind of my platform. It's a, I'm big into the, into the history of Hopkinton and, and, and people that made it what it is. Um, I also would normally have a reservation with alcohol being served on town property, but uh, the fact with like, like um, Mr. Hurst said with the library and, and we're going to do it for the DPW and we have the cultural arts. Um, I think that there are that there's there's enough instances in the in the past that will allow us to do this, and I, I don't have a problem with it. And the Starline folks will be there. They're tip certified, so they'll they're gonna they they are gonna be right. handling Not the, the beer part right. beer yep. por portion and of that. And right. that's another great thing that there's yeah. another business from Hopkinton that's supporting this. Absolutely. And so you know, I, I like that you're not having uh, a place in front here. Jack's happy to come in and do it, or, or something like that. I, I like that you that you have a, a Hopkinton business yeah. supporting a charity for Hopkinton for a Hopkinton guy in Hopkinton. So Thank you. Might as well do it on Hopkinton land. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, well, I mean, Andy Wellsville is certainly a name in Hopkinton. The trail up off a center mm -hmm. trail yeah. started by Dan Polico. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, it, it's certainly a very good cause. Uh, I do have just a couple questions, sure. one on the time of the race mm -hmm. and also on some of the emergency provisions sure. relative to the course. Um, I, I did notice in the comments <coughs> to the board, and maybe those have been updated, that the, um, the fire department had some questions relative to um, communicating on medical uh, safety mm -hmm. issues along the course, um, a way to notify if there is an issue i i see that the police department has no concerns with the course mm -hmm. I, I was concerned because um fruits not so much fruit street but spring street and pond street and right. winter street are very narrow very blind um roads but apparently the, the police is comfortable but have you resolved those those um, safety concerns at the fire department. Side. Yeah, so we we are going to have an EMT uh, on site at the at the start and the finish. Um, we'll also have um, a, a car, a sweeper car, uh, or a bike, uh, who's going to uh, basically follow the pack and okay. be at the end of the race. We'll also have first aid kits at both water stops. There'll be two water stops, one at mile two and one at mile four. Um, and we're also going to have uh, captains at each water stop with phones and communications and we're again going to have volunteers along the course so right. s someone will be there. Okay so if someone needed help or yep. were incapacitated right. during the course there's someone. There'll be someone there yeah we're going to have plenty of right. coverage along the course. Right. Okay. okay. Um, my other question was just the hour um, 6 a.m. is awfully early. So 6 a.m. is not the start of the race. No, the race starts at 9. Correct, but this is a residential neighborhood and I noticed you're picking up your numbers at 7.30. What, what is happening at 6.30? There's all homes around there in the Saturday sure. morning. Sure. Um, usually it's concerned. just the setup crew. It'll yeah. be like myself and Kathleen and Laura really just things getting set up, making sure the volunteers are there. Most of the volunteers probably won't check in until 7 or 7.30. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, it's just the pre-race right the pre-race preparations yeah, that sure. we're going to need. Um, typically, I think we already kind of cut it short, keeping in mind that this is a residential community, a right. right. residential area. Right. Um, but I think 7.30 is when most people will start showing up for the race. So will there be music or anything? No, not to, yeah, we won't, we'll, there may be music, but probably not, we won't start the music until later, you know, as we start to get closer to race time. Okay, all right, thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Um, my, mine are pretty similar. You know, six thirty in, in December, it's dark. Yeah. <laughs> six. Yeah. Six? So again, yeah. there'll be. Six. Yeah, it's still dark six. out. Yeah. And so, it's but again, really we dark. Yeah, yeah. It'll be yeah. just just the the core group set of people crew, set right? up crew. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then the only, the other one I was worried about because I I live in that area and I and when my daughter was starting to drive, I said, 
if you can drive on Pond Street or Winter Street, you know, in the dark and in the rain, you can drive anywhere in the world. Because <laughs> those are really are narrow, yes, winding are, roads yeah. with, and, and with, right. uh, with hike changes. Um, you know, and, and you know, it's saying that you're not going to block any of them off. It's, it's, it, it could be, it could be uh, dangerous. We but did talk to the, I mean, I think the, the police officers, seen, uh, Officer Porter seemed okay with the route, okay. um, but we, some of the, there's an interesting uh, intersection on winter when you switch from pond to winter. There's right. that kind of, so we are going to have multiple volunteers at the at the, I guess the more interesting intersections to make sure that because um, people can easily go the wrong way. Sure. Exactly. And then, yes, and people can go the wrong way and end up running forest. a half marathon yeah. instead of a 10k. So yeah. yeah, so yeah, we're going to have people at the, <coughs> at the right places. We've already mapped out the course and know where the volunteers are going to go. Okay. One more. Well, no, I'm, I'm, I'm oh, still yeah, going. Why is everybody cutting me <laughs> off today? Because you're not in a center chair. <laughs> oh man. <coughs> okay, now. and then and then you know, and, and um, in deference to you know, to to some of the other members of the board, um, we haven't had uh, liquor at, at you know the, the first one we're going to have will be the library coming up this week, and then um, we haven't had liquor at a, at a mm. uh, using public land yet. <laughs> This, this will be the this this the, you know and, and so, so the CAA is a public facility. But but they had the we got but we we, we we did we worked out a lease. The land. No no we worked out that lease and it took us a long. But time. we own the land. No I. I, I it's it's, it's under it's under different purview. It's under the purview of that lease and that was all coordinated with town council. One along what Mr. Catino is saying, one thing I would like to find out <coughs> is uh, exactly what was approved at town meeting, um, at our last town meeting, because it was very specific as to the number of events. And then I'm wondering, did it say buildings? Did it say town property? And things of that nature. You know, because I, well, you know, I'm, I, I get that I'm in the minority here as far as my feeling and I'm you know but I just want to make sure that what we do is legal you know and that's and that's one of the things because it you know it's, it's a great cause and we have you know great people behind it that with start line and all of that but uh, you know in, in hearing um, mr. Sestari's concern I want to just make sure that that we did discuss it and, um, because this this will be the uh, the first time that we're actually uh, exercising the um, uh, the warrant article that came up at, at town meeting um, outside or uh, outside because we were going to only do it for two events initially it was going to be the the library and the DPW then we wanted to add a second a third one and then it opened up and if so we use if we use your logic mr. Herr, then the fact that we had that agreement with the CAA already would mean that we didn't even need to get an agreement at town at town meeting Brewster, Matt, uh, Brewster, Massachusetts, the Brewster Five starts and ends at the police station, and they have beer. I mean, we're making a mountain out of a molehill here. This happens all the time all over the Commonwealth. I would hate to see us put a damper on the event, because I think the 200 is light, frankly. I think yeah. you can get a lot of people there and raise a lot of good money. I hope so. Uh, yeah. And honor Andy and yeah. you know promote Start Line and do a lot of great things. Um, if we don't have that piece of the puzzle, it's it's commonplace for these races to have this. I don't know if you guys run 10Ks, but they're all over in Massachusetts and they all do this. Uh, and that's the one I'm just thinking of now because I've done that a bunch of times around Thanksgiving here. I think that's actually... But they may have done something different at their town meeting. So basically, it, it, so, you know, so, so I'm, you know, I'm okay with it. I just want to make sure that we make sure that uh, we're not allowing something that wasn't expected, but you know, it's 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 it seems fine. It's not school property. It's uh, you know, it's 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 outside in the fields. You know, they're not drinking before noon time. Oh, that's on a Sunday, so we're not worried about that stuff. Um, but uh, we're not breaking any blue laws or anything that kind of stuff. Yeah, this is runners running. It's not us running. So they would be drinking before noon. I think the only <laughs> I think the only area in town where alcohol is precluded from being sold or served is on school property for obvious reasons I don't think anywhere else any other town building and we can you can we can issue a but we issue special licenses to churches all the time 
and they have alcohol. It's high time to go. But that's why we had to have. That's why we. But had I don't think there's a rule that says you can't have alcohol at a town-owned facility. We just happen to codify it and create that thing with the town meeting. But that didn't say in years past we couldn't do it. I thought it did, and that's why we had to do it last year. I don't know why we would have brought it to town meeting. If we didn't have yeah. to. There was a reason we brought it to town meeting. But, um, but um, I'm good with it as long as Mr. Kamalo can, can just, you know, dot a couple I's and cross a couple T's to make sure that we're clean. Um, I think uh, I'm ready to uh, look for a uh, motion to... Uh, question. Okay. Um, parking. Mm -hmm. 250 people. Where are they going to park? So we have the lot there at Victory, um, and we also have the overflow lot at Fruit Street. The first street fields. <laughs> oh, on a oh, uh, sorry to cut you off. No, on a no. Saturday, is it okay with Parks and Rec? Yes. Yeah, yes. Okay. Yeah, we have approval. Yeah, yes. Okay. Yep. Good. Yeah. Okay. All right. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay. The chair. Yeah. Look, look, is is Mr. Kamala looking for that information? Y yes. Um, part of the answer is that the bylaw that was approved at town meeting, yes, does include cons consumption of alcohol on public land. Okay. Good. Thank you. Um, we did confirm. The, the, the other consideration that we reviewed was uh, confirming that alcohol will not be consumed before 10 a.m. Yeah. We're not starting serving until 10 because the race is at 9 and then right. typically it's going to be about, we're not going to start serving until 10. Mm -hmm. Probably the slower people. <laughs> they need it the most, right? Yeah. Like to drink <laughs> Look at me. You know, I just ran Marine Corps this weekend. So <coughs> I know how to run. Not okay. very fast, but I can get through it. So. And, and what else does it say, Mr. Kamal? Yeah. The, yeah. The, just so that I know going forward. I'm it, checking exactly. something else. <laughs> yeah. The. I think the provisions that the town emphasized uh, were the following four: uh, that the that a non-profit organization is hosting the event; mm -hmm. um, that the net proceeds raised from such an event uh, directly benefit the town or its residents; mm -hmm. uh, that the event marks a special occasion for the non-profit organization or the town. Uh, and as I said earlier, that consumption of alcohol does not occur before 10 a.m. So, how many can we have for you? Um, I, think it down. I don't have the minutes from town meeting. We went to town meeting thinking that uh, or proposing three events. I remember town meeting raised that number. Yeah, so, yeah we went yeah. from three to I think. Yeah, I, don't, I don't have the minutes here. I'm looking for. It was unlimited. Yeah. They kicked the town. Yeah. 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 Okay, so it seems like you checked language? all the boxes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> is there specific Excellent. language in that that it's 10 a.m. Eastern time? No. Yeah. So noted. Yeah. 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 Okay, so okay. two parts. Okay, so the chair will, uh, is looking for a motion to approve the parade permit for the uh, running club. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right, now the chair is looking for a uh, motion <coughs> for the temporary alcohol license. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, it's unanimous. Excellent. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I'll send you the link you guys can sign up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, would you? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> no, we're just coming for the start line. <laughs> <laughs> After all that. Okay. <laughs> Naming of the uh, 66 Fruit Street Access Driveway and Roadway. Uh, Mr. Chair. Yes. Through you, the request is coming before the board uh, owing to the following. Number one, uh, Fruit Street is becoming a popular destination in town. Uh, people visiting the fields, uh, as well as uh, people visiting DPW and the, those who are interested in the was wastewater treatment facility. But overall, it's the fields. Uh, number two, we have received feedback from public safety that Considering the number of people who visit Fruit Street, it's important that uh, we have a clear address. Uh, there's confusion uh, on the number because people think we're going to the DPW building. 
other people drive into the DPW garage, uh, other people pass the fields and go into the wastewater treatment facility. Uh, and thirdly, uh, we're also uh, taking advantage of the asset naming policy that the board approved. And it is for those reasons that I'm requesting the board authorize town staff to begin the process for naming the roadway uh, going into the fields at Fort Street. Okay. Mr. Sestari. My name starts with a C. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We got that one out of the way. Mr. Herr. I have no comments, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Mr. Ted Stone, you're going to say something this time. No, I'd like to just move this along. There's no reason to talk. I don't have a reason to talk about this. Okay. Ms. Wright may have something to say. Well, I just have a question. So um, I know we did discuss at one point the town naming or selling names or selling the names of assets or whatever, and I, and I seem to recall that this board, at least, most members were not in favor of sort of selling Hopkinton. Um, so, and I do understand we have an asset naming policy that names should have some significance. So who will be making the proposals for the name? Is it for sale or uh, are we just, is the town staff going to try to come up with some appropriate names? How does that work? In our discussions, we were basically considering going to sources in town that will identify names that are Historical. reflective of the community character, history, and culture. Okay. But then we make the final determination. Yes. Right? But we won't be naming it the um, Dell Computer Park or whatever. I mean, I think we... Yeah. I think we <laughs> well, you never know. The selling, <laughs> selling of Hopkinson yeah. was not... I like the, I, I, again, it's naming the street right. and not the fields. Yes. I like maybe the thought of like no way <laughs> or dirt road. <laughs> okay. We do athletes way. Yeah. Hiller way. Hiller way. I thought a Hiller road. Hiller way. Yeah, Hiller way. Maybe we should put a subcommittee together for this. <sighs> okay. Yeah. Let's have Thank Start you. Line Brewing show up. <laughs> start Line Way. Yeah. Not before 10 a.m. Bob <laughs> Dubinsky Boulevard. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. So we're, we're, this is getting silly now. So uh, the, the chair look for a motion to uh, direct the uh, town manager to uh, put the wheels into motion to get this uh, thing approved. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And 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 uh, wordsmith my uh, motion. <laughs> okay. Uh, liaison reports. Mr. Herb. Uh, nothing since the last meeting of consequence. Thank you. Same here. Good stuff. Ms. Wright. Um, I don't have anything, but I did have a question on a piece of the correspondence that came to the Board of Selectmen from the um, MWRTA Advisory Board, and I noticed in the liaisons that Mr. Herr is the current um, mm -hmm. liaison, and the MWRTA was asking for confirmation each year of who the representative would be. So, do they know that? Does, is Mr. Herr, Mr. Herr's continuing on that board? Should we be notifying? Well, we them did. Of that? We did liaisons, or we did appointments to yeah. various committees. A few months ago, you were put on it. I right. know. I just don't know why they sent this yeah, letter. They, Ask, they sent a letter asking for us to send them a confirmation of the liaison. Yes, they normally do so. You know, Ed Ed actually expects a letter from John Cotino, the chair. So we will work with, with Mr. Cotino to send the letter. And he will okay. be designating. Right. They yeah. said Mr. the chair or his designee. So right. exactly. Mr. Yeah, Mr. Herb, we said so last year I was at the <coughs> that and he was <coughs> on the board. Okay. Well, two years, two, yeah. three years ago, out of whatever it was. Okay. And so we just that switched it off. That will be done. Okay, okay. No, nothing else from me. Okay, and uh, I, I just want to thank uh, Chief Slayman and the fire department for the open house uh, on the 15th. That was a, it was a lot of fun. Um, it was, uh, I mean, the lines to take a ride, I didn't even get a chance to get on a ride in a truck. I 
I like that stuff. <laughs> but it was really a lot of fun. Um, I'm really glad that, uh, that you did it again this year. Thank you very much. But other than that, I don't have anything either. Was, is there any update? Have there been any meetings uh, of the budget advisory team? Oh, oh, right. Okay, I guess we could talk about that. Yes. Um, yeah, the, um, uh, there's a, a group of us got together, a, a subcommittee got together to, uh, to, to try and discuss um, any um, uh, pitfalls that we might run into later on and any, any issues, uh, any, any large... Um, budget busters that we might commit to, and um, you know we're we're trying to work those through between the school committee and and uh, and, and the town. Um, and there there are some that are coming down the pike. We they were discussed at the um, uh, school committee meeting last Thursday. Um, there's a uh, a large. Uh, Bill coming through for the uh, for special ed um, and out of uh, out of district placement, um, so we're gonna have to keep an eye on that. And uh, and then we went over some of the uh, capital articles that the uh, schools are looking for, and that's outside of the the fields. And that was that that was the day before. Mr. Kamalo, you want to comment? I said Mr. Kamalo's in there. Well, so <coughs> that's that's trying to be worked out so that I, in the end. Assuming it gets worked out, our board won't have to worry about it. I think based on the issue that was discussed, um, and, and I made this recommendation, in fact, at that meeting, and uh, that the scale of the, the scale and the magnitude of the additional budget costs that the school department has identified would require a direct conversation between the school committee and the board of selectmen. Okay. Yes. It's significant. So, in answer to your question, the issue will be brought to, if, if the issue continues to be part of this budget discussion, it should be brought to the board of selectmen uh, for a full discussion by the board. Okay. Yeah. And that'll be in the earlier part of this full cycle as opposed to January or February? Yes. Mm -hmm. They haven't officially brought it to us, right. so we can't. So I didn't want to officially bring it to uh, to the full board. Mm -hmm. um, Tell manager's report. Yes. Um, b before I jump onto the town manager's report, the board invite invitees list uh, was included in your packet uh, of special mm -hmm. note. Uh, is the Hockington Public Library grand opening this coming Friday. Uh, the Metro West YMCA charity auction on uh, November 2nd. And then the Mill Creek residential grand opening of Modera uh, Hopkinton, which is the Muse. Uh, that is November 14th at 6 p.m. Um, and then there is the Veterans Day dinner on uh, November 11th at the Woodville Road and Gun Club. Town manager's report. I included in the packet a request for a fee waiver from the Hopkinton Housing Authority uh, in the amount of 6,465. Uh, per the town's general bylaw, only the Board of Selectmen can grant a fee waiver. So, I'll answer any questions that the board may have. What's the fee for? Um, repairs and improvements to the facility. Uh, they did uh, include an itemized list of the applications that would be submitted to uh, the town. Uh, there's an energy audit, uh, office rehabilitation, laundry room rehabilitation, uh, rehabbing kitchens and bathrooms at 89 Davis Road, and then moving the community meeting room, and then one electrical permit. And all of those uh, amount to $6,465. Anything? I have no questions. Okay. Do you need a motion? To yes, please, I need a vote by the board either granting the fee waiver or rejecting the request for a fee waiver. So I guess I'm just I'm confused maybe with terminology. Mm -hmm. 
term fee waiver, who who uh, performs these services of fixing and upgrading? Who's responsible for it? Contractors that are identified by the housing authority and the state. The specific request is coming before you because for this work to be performed, the town needs to issue building permits. Mm -hmm. And applying for a building permit requires a fee. They are now asking the town to waive that fee okay. because they're a nonprofit. They so, so it's not that they're looking for us to fund the improvements. No. It's just the permits yes. are 6400 <coughs> whatever dollars. Yes. OK, that's yeah. where the disconnect was. Yeah. We charge a lot for fees. There's yeah. a lot of permits. No, I don't. Don't list this long. Mr. Hearn. Yeah. So I'm okay with waiving the fee if if this work, I'm assuming the work has been bid out and it's been awarded, or it's been awarded in whatever public procurement process they had to follow, that's fine. Uh, so I'm assuming that it was awarded, and it was awarded without permits included. If it was awarded with, if it was awarded with permits included, and then this six thousand dollars is saving the contractors money, then I would be opposed to it. But if the six thousand dollars is going back to the Hopkinton Housing Authority and the taxpayers of Hopkinton, then I would support it. Good question, Mr. Hey, I was made to believe that this is a permit that is the obligation of the housing authority. I can confirm that. We should confirm that yeah. though, because ninety nine point nine percent of the time the contractor pulls the permit after being awarded the job. Whatever, whatever the job is. So uh, I'll make a motion to approve waiving the permit fees for the Hopkinton Housing Authority work as outlined this evening, uh, contingent upon the fees being credited to the Housing Authority and not a contractor in between. Does that make sense? Makes sense, yeah. Second. Good add on. Okay. Do we have a second? second? I would uh, second okay. that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, um, in your packet, I included the draft entertainment and amusement policy, as well as the staff memo summarizing the policy. Uh, I'm, okay, I'm just clicking on the memo. Okay, great. Um, he, here's what we, we, we did. Uh, we took a look at the list of issues that the board identified uh, as what potentially could be the requirements included in the policy. Uh, we mo made an honest effort to include most of the issues that the board raised. Um, in, in summary, when we were drafting the purpose, uh, we took into consideration the emphasis that was made by the board to make sure that we comply with applicable laws and regulations. Uh, in addition, we believe that this policy will address public <coughs> safety, public health, and public order. Uh, the issue of order comes up because in previous instances, we have looked at the impact of uh, any proposed activity on the neighborhood. And one of the issues that the board has discussed extensively is what are the processes in place to maintain order and minimize disruption to the neighborhood. Then in terms of the scope of the policy, I felt I needed to list this out for the board. Uh, it covers automatic amusement devices, live and non-live entertainment, uh, the, the theatrical exhibitions, uh, public shows, carnivals, public amusement, concerts, dance exhibitions, cabaret, recorded or live music, amplified music and televisions, and Sunday licenses. Under the general guidelines, <coughs> uh, we specifically identify uh, guidelines that apply to both the sections 177 and 181 licenses. Uh, the issue that I am specifically requesting board input on uh, is whether the town should adjust the threshold for requiring entertainment licenses for amplified music and televisions, and also how the fees should be defined for the different, li different licenses that are identified in the policy. 
in terms of the threshold, currently we require entertainment licenses even for a single radio or television. Other towns have a different threshold. Uh, I've seen regulations that put the threshold at three, five, and in some cases, 10. So the point here is I'm asking the board whether we want to continue requiring entertainment licenses even for a single television or a single radio. There was also the comment from the board that we really pay attention to how we address the quarry process. Uh, I have asked Town Council for guidance and they are still looking into this issue and will advise us further as this process uh, develops. In terms of entertainment licenses, um, per the board suggestion, we specifically require documentation demonstrating that the owner of the property has authorized <coughs> submission of the application. This came about when we were reviewing, when the board was reviewing the application for the carnival on school property. The board wanted to make sure that the school committee had actually authorized submission of that application. <coughs> the board also required us to look very closely at defining a public hearing process. This policy does that. As well as requiring a butter notification um, we specifically looked into this issue with town council whether we would require uh, a butter notification for both section 177 and 181 licenses. Uh, the response from town council is that we will require the a butter notification for section 181 entertainment licenses and any other entertainment license which includes outdoor entertainment. For example, if somebody is using an amplified system uh, or a live entertainment gig, uh, which may uh, be located outside of a building and therefore will allow the noise to travel to the neighborhood. Uh, issue that the board may think about is uh, guidance on hours of permitted entertainment. Uh, the board could set hours based on weekdays or simply decide on a case-by-case -case basis or alternatively have a hybrid approach. Does all this mean that the high school football team is going to have to get a permit every Friday night game? The DJ. In, in drafting this policy, the board has the discretion to identify exemptions. <laughs> and then in terms of the Section 177 licenses, we again require a public hearing process for these licenses. <coughs> I'm seeking the board's guidance on the duration of these licenses. Um, the licenses, the, the state, here's why. The statute is silent on this matter. It doesn't I, identify whether these are one-year licenses, six-month licenses, event-by-event -event licenses. Uh, most towns require renewal after December 31st, so they are annual uh, renewals. Uh, the board may have reasons for requiring shorter or longer duration of the Section 171 licenses. So I wanted to give the board the opportunity to discuss that issue. So in summary, the policy that I'm sharing with you, uh, the board does not need to discuss this today, uh, incorporates the feedback that the board has given us over many, uh, many months of discussion. I believe there have been mm -hmm. at least two or three meetings that the board has discussed this issue. Uh, and I can take any questions at this point. Again, the idea is put this <coughs> policy in your hands early enough. I've identified items that the board has raised before. I wanted to highlight additional issues that have come up in the process of drafting the regulation. Um, and I have also suggested that at some point, the board perhaps, if the board is inclined to move forward with this policy, that the board should schedule a public hearing so that the policy be adopted by a public hearing process. It's not required, but I think it's the appropriate thing to do. Sure. Uh, no, no real questions or comments at this point. I think you had a couple of questions in there that specifically you were looking for some guidance on, so maybe we, can we start with those and kind of go from there? Well, I figured we would try and chew on this 
they hold it off until next meeting. Okay. okay. That's fine. But so unless, if, unless, <coughs> it, 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 unless the board's inclined to stop. The only one I remember him mentioning was the last one, which is the timeline. Yeah. I like the idea of an annual renewal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The other one was the threshold for the entertainment licenses. We the town currently requires entertainment licenses even for a city. Yeah, I was smiling at that. That seems a bit ridiculous right. in the modern age. We, yeah, we got to we back off on that a little Televisions bit. everywhere, so can't hurt to put a couple more up. Be, be reasonable, yeah. Um, <clears throat> the only thing I have is um, you mentioned that uh, town council is looking at the Cory issue. I want to make sure that the sorry is included in the Cory. Yes. So it's not just criminal. It's is right. So where in the current bylaws can I find what we currently have? I'm, I really am not familiar with the current policies, but you're saying sounds like even a place like Cornell's has got a TV going or some background music, they have to pay a fee right now to have that. Where, where is that? Where can I find that and do my homework? In, in fact, one of the reasons why we are proposing this policy is because everything we are doing is based on past practice, not on established, written, codified bylaws. So there's nothing written anywhere that I can look up in town bylaws. It's just seat of the pants right now. No, there is a bylaw about entertainment that says one radio <coughs> and one TV. And that's it. And that's in but it's not, fee, it's not so much the fee, I don't think, yeah. as it is how many of these devices can you have going. In, in fact, even on that issue, Mr. Hare, we've, we've researched when the town may have adopted that policy. We couldn't find the record. So there's but nothing in past writing. Practice, there's yeah. nothing in writing like this is that you can yeah. look up and see yeah. the current guidelines. They, they aren't really codified. You will find some written documents in the town office, but there's no record of an official vote okay. adopting that policy. Can, can I just ask, I mean, this is, covers all kinds of stuff that I don't know that we have either happening in our town or even have facility to host these types of things. Is, is this coming out of some incidents or, or, or requests or is this just kind of a, an all perp, a general policy that we're figuring we should have in place if to cover us if ever these Correct. come up? I mean, I half the stuff. I, I don't know where we'd be having this in town if we ever had it. It's, it's, a, it's a combination of both. Yeah. You will recall when we were reviewing the carnival, right. the request for the carnival, uh, we realized the town did not have a policy yeah. for handling that. So issues have come up and we have not had a policy to adequately and properly review the request. Um, there's also the second component to it. Um, based on the bylaw, there are items that have not come before the town, but proactively want to make sure that if they eventually show up in front of us, that we have a policy to review them. Okay. Mr. Starry? Um, I agree that the licenses should be for a year. Uh, I'm not sure if you're looking for guidance from us on the fees that you have all X'd out. I know that it's really just supposed to cover the, the cost of our administration, right? Correct. For the licenses. Yeah. Uh, as far as the uh, general guidelines, paragraph B, amplified music and televisions, I think that that should, it, it shouldn't be a specific number, but it should be based on uh, the occupancy limit oh, okay. uh, in, the, in the space or the building. Um, and then I notice, I noticed that a few pages further back, uh, you also highlighted the proposed hours of permitted entertainment. Yeah. And I mean, I guess some of that would have to do, I think, with the type of entertainment, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, if we're talking about the TVs and radio, I don't think we need to set hours. If we're talking about live entertainment, then you know maybe we need to put more specifics in there. And my other thing is, I'm just wondering, what is a Scipio table? Yeah. I asked that question. <laughs> it's listed in the in the overall state law. I don't know what it is either. <laughs> well, yeah. 
it's charged more for that. Yeah, yeah and, and my only comment is the, um, just the, the term television and television radio. <clears throat> because, you know, there, there was a time where, where stuff came through radio, but now, um, you know, what, what do you call, you know, music coming through, uh, you know, iPods, or iPads, or yeah. everything is, else? Is something that you're getting, is, is television just the box itself, or is it the broadcast? If you're using Netflix, is that considered a television broadcast? You know, I think we probably have we should probably go, go maybe, generalities. Yeah, to, yeah let's go a little more generic, yeah. 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 And uh, because I, I don't think that people have to come to us if they're going to have background music at a restaurant. It's, I think that that should be, we should accept that and not have to have them come to us and say they're going to, uh, we need an entertainment license because we're going to have uh, elevated music on in the background. Or even the, or even the you know, the That's TVs the and the other bar. But, uh, uh, yeah, we'll just get to know more John. All right, anything else? Anybody? I, I just had a comment on uh, Mr. Kamala's question, guidance on hours permitted, whether you would set them uh, based on weekdays or case by case or hybrid. Um, I mean, I, I would tend to try to maybe do a hybrid where you do set some general guidelines and then the board reserves the right to make accommodations based on the circumstances. I think if you went totally case by case, you get into appearing to be arbitrary. Um, you know, well, you did this for so and so. Why can't you do this for me? That it would be better to have some some general guidelines, um, a framework, rather than totally, you know, starting fresh every single every single application. It just seems a little unfair. That's just me. Okay. Anything else? Yes. Um, so again, the idea is putting this in your hands. If you have any questions, please feel free to uh, call the office. I appreciate the input, the feedback that the board has given so far. Um, I, 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 I know through the chair, Erin uh, also has been very interested in, 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 in seeing this come to some form of fruition. Have you shared what we're working on with her team? Not at this point. Part of the conversation today was also for me to, as if you see the, the last paragraph uh, of my memo to the board, asking if there are any specific stakeholders that you'd like us to include. I was thinking of, yes, we'll include here. We'll also reach out to the chamber. We'll also reach out to establishments that currently have these licenses. Yeah, I'd share it. It should be a public document. So, well, it was just in draft form, though. That's why I think you would have to. It's just, really. mm -hmm. and ju just one more question. Is, is the main objective of this to have sort of some primarily control over establishments that are providing entertainment as part of their business as a fee? Or is it more um, neighborhood noise nuisance control? Um, because, you know, there are situations with non-profit organizations not not commercial entertainments but you know outdoor events that are not for a fee but there are <coughs> issues that I think you know perhaps need to be addressed is, is this strictly for for commercial enterprises or does it cover um, provide the need for someone who's having a big outdoor event that's going to make noise to, I don't know, I'm just kind of thinking out loud. Some of the things that this seems to co um, try to cover can also occur in a, in, in a non-commercial environment. That's a good question. Um, we will look into that. I don't know if we're going to try and, yeah. your, your next door, I don't think we're going to try and have a, a next door neighbor come up and say they're having a family reunion and right. So I think that, that that's getting to that might get a little <coughs> dicey to try and. I don't know. We've had some there are neighbors concerts, that are huh? not liking each other very much that have been writing us letters about their neighbors. So you know, if, if they're unhappy with their neighbor, you know, 
play on a television and a radio, if it's a violation of the bylaw, then they'll call on it. I don't know. My wife gets pretty upset when I have the television and the radio on at the same time. I don't know. I mean, an outdoor music event if it is in a neighborhood. Like how late should I'd like to know how many televisions go. you can have because you might be in violation. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mr. Radio. Okay. I, again, I think that's a good question. Will we look into that? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not for starting to stick my nose into people's private affairs, but some of this does seem to address, and maybe noise complaints are just handled by a call to the police who come and say, you know, it's 11 o'clock, you need to quiet it down. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I still think that this, that this really is, when, we, when we're looking at it, let's think of this as, Commercial, uh, commercial, right. commercial right. stuff. Let's let's yeah, stay out. There's public nuisance laws already. In yeah, place. let's stay out of that stuff, stuff and let's just really think of it as you know, as entertainment licenses for uh, commercial. For but I yes. To, to your question about the the various stakeholders, I would share it with the chief yeah. and his team and get their feedback and the fire department get their feedback. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I happen to know that one summer I don't know if it's continued, but there was a residence down on. Front Street that regularly held concerts in their backyard, and they were all they you sort of bought tickets for it by bringing food, and um, there were multiple complaints to the building inspector who really couldn't do anything about it, um, and there were you know several hundred people at a time at a, at a concert in this backyard with parking in the next door, and uh, the residents weren't happy. It was outdoor entertainment, open mm. to the public, and our bylaws didn't provide um, uh, our building inspector any grounds for shutting it down. I, but they, they came yeah, in. The, the, we're getting off topic. Okay, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah, saying, yeah, that was an yeah, instance of outdoor entertainment like in a party. private home. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so all right, yeah, they, they didn't they, have beer and, you know, on yeah. public property. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> anything else? Yes, and, and thirdly, um, an issue that has been brought to my attention, um, specifically the, the Park and Rec Commission is requesting um, a seat on the uh, Center School Reuse Committee. I have discussed this with the chair, uh, and I think the idea is to get the board's feedback on that request. So how many seats are on that committee today? Well, the, there, yeah. are, there are five voting members and yeah. four <coughs> that represent various stakeholders who are non-voting members. And the five voting members are more designed to bring certain skill sets to the board than representing stakeholders. But if I remember correctly, we weren't, uh, we only had five applicants, five people applied, so we, we Proved all five people, and we really didn't look at skill sets at the time. You know, I think we were trying to look, find a real estate agent, an architect, and I mean, we were trying to look for that stuff. But uh, it was open during the summer, and people, I guess, didn't see it. So we just. Uh, I think put the well. number of them brought those skill sets, but not everyone. But with these, with Parks and Rec controlling and managing extremely well that beautiful piece of land directly across from the center school, the common, it would make sense to have them kind of be there as a, a voice and a set of eyes for all of us to make sure that that's not negatively impacted. Not that we would do that or that committee would, but I can understand why they'd want to be there. I know it has, it has been raised and, and I know that the board certainly intends to bring in those voices from different stakeholders in certain parts of discussion. Um, I'm not sure whether it would be appropriate to bring them in as a voting member where other stakeholders have not been voting members. Ms. Tetzel, what do you think? I don't know, I think we're getting <coughs> too deep into the <coughs> into the weeds on this. I think that we should kind of, I don't know, like I, I think we're, we're doing some making mountains out of molehills. Um, yeah, I mean, no 
offense to my friends on the Parks and Rec Commission, but I just I don't see that uh, that having a vote for that committee specifically is necessary on this group. Um, you know, I think that we're trying to find a group that can investigate and and you know ask all the committees and groups in town. You know, do you have any specific need for the building? Uh, you know, after that, we're going to have people scouring through what the pros and cons of are, are of each of the options. Uh, we're going to be looking for input from all the boards and committees across town before we go and vote on anything. And then in the end, our our board might not even, you know, it's possible that uh, you know the option that we end up voting for isn't even presented. Um, so I. I guess I did. if someone on Parks and Rec is on the committee, there's no harm in that. But as a re representative of Parks and Rec, and that seat being reserved for them, I don't see the necessity in that. So I'm a liaison on one of the committees, um, and I'm not a voting member. And there's a difference, you know, uh, especially being someone that's used to voting and, and getting a say and getting a vote <laughs> as part of the process. There's a difference sitting there and chiming in but not voting um, so having kind of gone through that I, I like very much what's going on but um, still it's just it's different so I think you know for a duly elected board that's interested in participating in a process that's key and vital to maintaining you know the, the, the character of downtown Hopkinton I don't see the harm in it so I would support it myself. well there were a lot of boards that were act uh, that were also asking us for for seats and mm -hmm. we, we eliminated it and said that we were going to have uh, really dope board people sitting on it and, and going to keep it for just those five. But to Mr. Hur's point, yeah, the way that the that uh, uh, Parks and Rec has kept up the um, the town common and uh, now that you know they're they're, they're part of uh, um, the, the new fields with the with the schools. Um, yeah, I don't see the the, the harm in it. Um, uh, Can we get a statement from them asking? You know, yeah, so yeah, that's a good chair. point. The uh, request comes back to uh, approximately two years ago when we were asked to move from the town hall to 85 Main Street. And at that particular time, the town manager was happy to go ahead and support our efforts, help fund that, that move for a period, I think, two years or more. And we had some candid conversations about center school becoming available and the possible place for us to participate in the gym, run some after school classes. Uh, and in that light, <clears throat> we'd like to believe that we'd like to play an active role in this center school committee with a vote. And as the town manager suggested, that particular position would be filled either by the chairman or the co-chair. So that would be Dan Terry or I. Um, and we just feel it's fair to go ahead and ask that uh, that request now. I mean, I, I guess to me, sorry, Bob, but <laughs> you know that that um, that explanation, I, I would even be more against there being a vote because it seems like it seems like when their option comes up, that person would have to recuse themselves because it's benefiting that group. Uh, you know, we're, we're already, we've asked that group, that committee, to go out and talk to all the different town boards and committees and departments and say, do you feel like you have use for this building in the future? And then that group is going to evaluate all of them against each other. And, you know, it's kind of, uh, you know, it's kind of like, you know, us having a vote, you know, who gets the biggest piece of pie when we cut this? Well, I'm going to vote for me getting that big piece of pie. Um, I know you guys are out for what's best for the town, and, and there's no there's no question about and, that. And I don't think there's any uh, through the chair. There's no real preconceived idea that that would be the best spot for us. But to your point, Todd, um, as a commission, we have not been approached by anyone from that committee. We understand there's surveys <laughs> taking place, and um, our board, our, our commission voted uh, all in favor of this request through the town manager and through the chairman just so we could 
play that active role in helping guide the town. We one can be the, objective. One your, of the questions point. that we asked uh, all of the candidates that, that came up for the position was, um, as one of the, the aspects, would you be um, willing to listen to if the if the came um, if it came up to even selling the building, or not using the building, and you know so one of the th things that that uh, we're talking about part, you know when you're talking about using it for <coughs> um, after school or in offices and that kind of stuff, would you also if the if it w came down as the as the as the you know the rest of the five thought that that it may be too expensive or, or whatever. That the best use of it was was to dispose of it as a as a town asset, you know. Could, could the could Parks and Rec be open to something such as that? Because that's what we asked uh, ask all the other candidates that came up. To that point, we understand that some of the original estimates for refurbing the building and, and keeping it uh, up to date is close to fifteen million dollars. That's an awful ex awful expensive gym that I'm sure our budget couldn't afford. So to be objective, I think from our group, you've seen that objectivity through, uh, through many of our programs with a lot of continued success. To, so to Mr. Hur's point, we've been good custodians with some town properties, and we'd like to go ahead and continue with that. And, John, if I could yeah. respond to, to um, your comment about people coming and applying, and I, I think that the conversation that we had as a commission was around the fact that when we were asked to move out of town hall a couple of years ago, we did discuss being involved in, in, in center school at some point in time. So I don't think our request is coming that, 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 that an individual that is on Parks and Rec, but that Parks and Rec has representation on that. Uh, and, I, and I agree wholeheartedly with what, what Brian said, that um, it, it's a little different filling out a form and having that be your input versus being involved in the committee. We're, we're willing to be involved, we're interested in, to, in being involved, and when we moved out of town hall, we were promised consideration. And, and I guess, I guess at, at, at that right. point, I, I just, I, 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 we probably shouldn't have assumed that we would be involved in, in it a little bit more than just filling out a form, but we weren't. If I I may speak as the uh, selectman liaison to that committee, um, and of course it is advisory. You know, we're not whatever votes are taken are are not binding or definitive. It is an advisory board to to this board, um, and there's certainly been no desire to leave Parks and Rec out. In fact, we've only met two times. We're meeting again t tomorrow night, I believe. Um, just in the initial brainstorming, throwing out ideas of what could be used, Parks and Rec has been first and foremost in, um, you know, a user group. Even before we sent the questionnaire out, that's the first uh, entity that has been immediately identified as an obvious um, user for this. And and looking at the gym or looking at the office space, and um, the board has also thought that we should try to give town uses a priority before we look to other uses. Um, I will say, though, that the five voting members um, specifically did not represent any specific stakeholders. They were, and, and we've had, you know, measure, limited, well, I won't say limited, some success, not 100% success in finding people that met those qualifications, but they were to um, bring to the board a skill set rather than a vested interest in any particular use, such as an architect, someone with land planning experience, someone with real estate marketing experience, someone with, with public relations experience, um, qualities that could be useful in, in determining a use for the building. Um, we completely want input from Parks and Rec. Um, every meeting is an open meeting. Um, regardless of how this gets resolved, I would encourage a Parks and Rec <coughs> representative to come to every meeting um, and speak and be included. Um, but whether there may be other stakeholders as well that, um, I mean, to me, Parks and Rec is one of the most obvious ones but there may be others 
And so, you know, does that create a, a sense of favoritism <coughs> or adding more weight if one stakeholder group is an act is actually a member of the board where other stakeholder groups might not be? Um, I think that that's something the board has has wrestled with because we've heard this suggestion. Um, so personally, I would I would recommend leaving the board as it is and Parks and Rec attending the meetings. Um, I know the board had every intention as we get more specific in our deliberations to bring Parks and Rec in to be part of those discussions. Um, does not necessarily mean they have to be a member of the board. Uh, through the chair, I think your opening statement uh, was very important that if Park and Rec is foremost on the mind of that committee mm -hmm. for possible uses, it would be great to be on the ground floor of that decision process and be that voting member, given that that's the committee's first and foremost interest. But what I said constituted the five voting members. None of those five voting members are a stakeholder. Yeah, I think that's the understood. definition of stakeholder, though, too. I mean, these right. folks are not stakeholders as individuals right. or as well, a body. That, no, they they represent the town yes. of Hockington. Yeah, it was an angle to towards parks to and Dan's recreation. Point. And this is the only, these are the only stakeholders that are, that are, in a, that are duly elected. You know, and many other committees have come to us that are appointed committees and asked. This mm -hmm. is a, this is mm -hmm. an elected board. Uh, mm -hmm. So this is something that, that this way it, it holds a little more water for me. And, and the way that they put it is that the other people did come to us with a with a sheet filled out and we asked a an individual questions of how they would think what they were thinking. You know, this is this is a, a board um, that with our commission. You know, I, I'm I'm sorry, but and I know that I know that there are going to be hundreds of people out there who you know don't like what I have to say here. But this is this is about a piece of real estate. I know that it's a cherished piece of real estate in town. People treasure this and they want to make sure the right thing goes there. But we're dealing with this property and figuring out how it can best serve the town going forward, whether it's keeping it for specific uses of the town, whether it's selling it, you know, no matter what it is, that's that's what the goal of this group is. And you know, I mean to to uh, Ms. Wright's point, you know, we we came up with the committee by function and how we can get to that correct decision. Um, I don't, I, I know you said that you've met twice. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've already decided what your, what your process, you know, to getting to a decision is going to be, but that's probably, you know, the stuff that Amazing. you're talking about. I mean, the first one is who's gonna be chair, yeah, yeah. you know, and then you start getting into, okay, you know, how are we gonna structure meetings? Mm -hmm. How many meetings are we gonna have? How many public hearings are we gonna have? Um, but that's when you start meeting with other groups like Parks and Rec. After you guys come up with your decision, I'm sure that when you give your recommendation to this committee, then we're going to want to talk to the different town committees as well so that they can lobby for themselves if, if they still want to uh, before we make our decision. So there are plenty of steps along the way for committees who have interest in this property to give their viewpoint to this other group and I don't see where we have to uh, alter the, the makeup of this group at this point again if somebody if somebody leaves the committee and someone who happens to be on Parks and Rec is interested and they're appointed that's fine I don't have any gripe with that but to say this seat is reserved for somebody on Parks and Rec as a voting member I do have an issue with that at this point Thanks for your time. Thank you, you guys. Gals, too. Tomorrow night, 6.30. I can't tell you the location off the top of my head, but it's on the website. I would recommend you come to the meeting. So we didn't have this on. What, well, hey, it, is this on the agenda for tonight? Like, uh, town no. manager's update. So was yeah. it, was, and that was published as in the town manager's update? No. Okay. Not really. Can we try to take action on, or at least, is it out of order to make a motion? Well, I didn't make a motion because I didn't know, because this is, it was. It's out of order? Okay. 
That's why I just said okay, <laughs> because we, it, it's not listed. People couldn't come in to support it or any, or, or detract from it. So um, we can put it on as an agenda item if we wish for the next meeting. That brings us to future agenda items. I would like for us to get an update from the IT department. Uh, what's happening <coughs> with our IT infrastructure, what's been happening for the last, whatever, six to eight months. Um, and I'd like to find out what's going on with uh, the town website. To that, yes, <laughs> the visiting statement on the front. We were, v were very close to rolling out the new website. Uh, it's ready. Um, it, we will roll it out as uh, a better site alongside the existing site uh, so that we can also receive public input. Um, we were ready to do that. In a nutshell, here's what has been happening the last six, eight months with IT. Town hall transition, town hall transition, library, library, DPW, yeah. DPW. Oh, yeah. those, those are the big, big things they've been working oh. on. Yeah. I mean, I think some of you who went into the library yesterday, you saw the extent of the IT component uh, in the project. You'll see the same at DPW, and that's, that's where their resources are. I would say that someone's really busy this week, based yeah. on all the printers that were on the floor and routers on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of everything that needed to be set up and put in place. <coughs> yeah. But you still want the update, yeah. Yeah, the IT update. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and actually, it, it, uh, on the on piggybacking on that, um, for the last uh, three or four years, we've put anywhere from uh, two hundred to I think seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars towards um, IT and security and cameras and, and all of that. And and I noticed that even in this year's budget coming up, the schools I think are putting a couple hundred thousand. I think we're putting some more money into it. Could we have an overview of what we've what we've got as a town for the, the this million or so dollars, and uh, just to see what's uh, what's uh, what's up with it? Because I guess it, it, it actually yeah it actually would be nice to have both the the school and town IT departments come together to give a joint presentation to see where both groups are going. If and when we're intersecting at all, and how we can, you know, get any type of economies uh, of scale. Because yeah. at one point we were, we were working together, and it just seems like we're, I keep seeing another couple hundred thousand. Phase two, phase three, phase four. How many phases are there going to be, and are we going to have to do this every single year? Yeah. And that's all. So if we could add that one on there, Miss Wright. Mm, I think I'm right now. Mr. Tetzler. <coughs> I'm good. Hey, Mr. So, um, first, and it was before you arrived this evening, Mr. Chair, Mrs. Wright had us walk through um, with a public comment uh, <coughs> that was raised by Mr. Lagoy that meeting protocol and looking at a guideline or policy coming out of the Board of Selectmen as to encouraging boards and committees in town to give folks an opportunity to speak in the public before votes are taken instead of after votes are taken. Just talk about meeting protocols in general. So future meeting item, future agenda item for that, if we could please. Yeah. Two, I'd like to add, um, given our recent discussion here, that we talk about the center school revitalization or reuse committee and adding parks and rec officially to that group uh, as a future agenda item. And then before we adjourn tonight, just to remind us, um, I'm not clear on what Mr. Kamala was kicking around with Mr. Mieres earlier, but I do believe we need to take another vote on that appointment tonight before we adjourn. Yeah. I know it's quicker okay. just to take the vote, but can we just get an explanation of why again? Yeah, so well, that's it for my future agenda <laughs> items, plus I think we gotta address this tonight. Yeah. So yeah. So we have to do an appointing yeah. committee, I guess. Is that what we have to do first? Is that what we're voting on right now? Or is yeah, it the actual vote? Here is why. And I take full responsibility for this because I'm the one who asked the question. And this has come up because I think in the past three months, every time the board has had a reappointment, questions have come up in terms of the terms. 
uh, in terms of the charge, in terms of who is on what committee. So my, re my request to town staff now is if ever there's a committee that is coming before us, that we do our background. Where is the charge? Who is on the committee? What membership is being filled? So as part of this process, I then said I needed to read the agreement that the town signed regarding membership. And what I found was that in appointing members to fill vacancies outside the regular election process, the town has to set in place an appointing committee. And to be clear, I've actually looked at the language. You were correct. The appointing committee includes members of the Board of Selectmen and the remaining members of the town, not the whole, not the remaining members of the town on the KIFTEC school committee, not the whole KIFTEC school committee. Just want to be clear on that. Mm -hmm. So in this case, it's Mr. Texton. The crafters of that agreement did not anticipate a situation where a member of the selectmen will also simultaneously be a member of the school committee, which is our case here. And so the question that I posed to both the town clerk and town council was, how do we count Mr. Texton's vote? Because now what we have is we have five members and a sixth member, sixth member representing the KIFTEC uh, committee, school committee. The quorum for that group, in my view, is four members. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm thinking to play this safe, we should have a vote that includes Mr. Cotino. Mr. Cotino becomes the fourth member of the Board of Selectmen. But we had four. No, no, because he was sitting as the <coughs> was sitting as. I should count twice. But it's isn't the quorum. It's the quorum of the appointing committee is four, which we have. The appointing committee. Mm -hmm. That's correct. So That's correct. we had four people. We yeah. had a quorum of the appointing committee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so now, what else is needed? Uh, again, from my perspective, what else is needed? It's. It's, I'm looking for a vote that may withstand any scrutiny. The chair is looking for a motion yeah. to approve, I'm sorry, the yeah. candidate. Excuse me, could we have, could we have the, the member of the Keith Tech Committee sit <laughs> over in the Keith Tech seat? I get two votes. <laughs> so Mrs. Gates was a member of the Board of Selectmen. And Mrs. Gates is a member of the. There's Keith no question that we brought this before. Keith Tech, <laughs> yeah, we, school committee. Again, I, I take full responsibility. I, I'm, I looked at this and I saw the agreement, and and th that's the second step, which I say at a future meeting, we will post the, the appointing committee, because, when when whoever is, is nominated now goes to be sworn in, the town clerk will say, was this meeting posted? And the answer as of tonight is no. That's why we will post a, a meeting and, and, take, and the, allow the committee to take a quick vote. And it's so, as of, so, so yeah. basically, so, Jamie's not appointed as of right now. Because yeah. it wasn't the key. Well, that's unfortunate. Yeah. It wasn't the appointing committee. Yeah. Okay, so, so why do we even make a take motion to, to that? Yeah, yeah let's we don't have to take one tonight. Yeah. Just just so now, do I appoint an appointing time. committee right now? No, that's already in the law or the agreement. <laughs> okay, so w Mr. Kamalo, please come up with a motion for us so that I can look for one. <laughs> I don't think it for, matters. I think yeah, we it just, next time we get next together, time we'll we get together. together. Okay. Yeah, okay. So future agenda item is the appointing <coughs> exactly. committee. Is the appointing committee. So yeah. now the uh, chair's looking for a motion to adjourn. But we need to make so sure we've got all five people here. If Jamie left exactly. here, if she goes to a committee meeting, no. she can't vote. Maria will have to just tell her. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, we, we so, told her that there's the possibility that this gets temporarily suspended. Yeah, I mean, we can, we, can, we, can, we can post a meeting for Friday, you know, at, at the library at 2 p.m. And we can have an appointing committee then, as long as there's three others there. plus Brendan. Yeah, because I'm out Friday. But. No, you have, well, we're going to have to have all five of us. Why? Because, because Mr. Kamala says the board, the, the, we need the four. board the four is six, us. so we need four. No, four. Without well, Brandon. The Keith Tech, we, 
our, la- our meeting is on the 19th. Plus Brendan. That's so four. So we're not going to have another one for another month. He couldn't. No, he, could, he, he could be. He, he, no, he could just be. <coughs> <coughs> All right. He yeah. just he just figured that out. Yeah. We don't, they they our, don't have another our meeting. Our meeting was the 19th, so we don't have another meeting until uh, for a month. Yeah. Okay. For We can get this thing done at the next meeting. Um, she's okay, not going to have to go to a meeting uh, when she shouldn't. This, this will all be rectified on the next meeting. I have full we'll confidence in Mr. Kamara. Full confidence. Mr. Yeah. Chair. One, 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 recomm- one recommendation. From a customer service viewpoint, can the board reflect that the vote tonight by the selectmen is to recommend this candidate who was here tonight? For this position, so that we don't have to bring it back to a meeting. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Good. Sorry, Todd. <laughs> I was under the impression okay. there would be no match. I was just going to move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor. Aye. Aye. Thanks, everyone. Good. Thank you. Good night. Some stuff to sign here.